The following program is for adult audiences only. Sunset on the canyon road One arm out my window Left and didn't tell a soul Where I'm headed, I don't know Life is heavy lately Nothing seems to go my way these days I feel the season changing And I think it's about time I close my eyes And let it take me somewhere new tonight Wherever the wind blows I'll go I'm not chasing it Whatever tomorrow's gonna hold find my way I've been spending so much time swimming up against the tide wherever the wind blows I know it's better than where I've been moonlight on a back road drive the last breath of late July Watch the days turn into nights None of them were ever mine Life is heavy lately Good things can never stay that way Feel the season changing And I think it's about time chasing it whatever tomorrow's gonna hold i'll find my way i've been spending so much time swimming up against the tide wherever the wind blows i know it's better than where i've been chasing it whatever tomorrow's gonna hold i'll find my way in. i've been spending so much time swimming up against the tide wherever the wind blows i know it's better than where i've been it's better than where i've been
I look a bit blurry today. What the fuck's going on here? It's time for the Mixin' and Chillin' vlog. Even if they re implemented some ridiculous laws, this is something that if somebody truly wants to do this, if somebody truly wants to do this, they can still do it. They can still do it. But it's gonna take a lot of effort on the vapors part to actually learn what it takes to make your own stuff. Make your own stuff. I don't know what the heck happened to the last hour of my life, but it certainly wasn't streamed on YouTube like I thought it was. Restrictive policies, Restrictive policies. block progress towards smoke-free world. Smoke -free Many world. people incorrectly think that very little nicotine content cigarettes are less carcinogenic than current cigarettes. This risk misperception by people who smoke could reduce motivation to quit under a nicotine reduction policy. That's a bit of a problem. Someone who specializes in helping people kick the habit is Dr. Colin Mendelson. He joins me now. Look, vaping is a far less harmful alternative to smoking for adult smokers who just can't quit, and that's actually the majority of them. The road to quitting smoking is paved with candy. Paved with candy. Double chocolate clear from TFA. Double chocolate clear from TFA. Published in the Vaping Post, we have long-term study. Long-term study. Vaping increases odds of quitting heavy smoking. This is Kenny Thompson, The Vaping Heed. He's got a YouTube channel. He's been on here a lot longer than I have. I'm not gonna stop until this is legal and available for everyone. You know, I cover things from all around the globe, but that's because science has no boundaries. I mean, you know, the FDA and everything, we would know that they're safer than smoking, but we'd rather have the pressure off the tobacco companies or the, the you know, the, the states that are in the MSE and all that. It's just a financial thing, and it's, and unfortunately, that, that takes precedence against everything. And Grab your juice, grab your vape, it's time to get this party started. It's time for the mix and chill Long-term long study. Smoke free world. Smoke free world. Hello and welcome everyone. Time for another episode of Mixing and Chilling with Hunky Vape <laughs> and Kenny the Vaping Heed. Hi, everybody. Hope you're all Hey, man, what do you think? My daughter got me a customized hat with the Hunky Vape brand on it, the logo. Very nice. I like that leather. Very nice. Very nice. Unfortunately, it is quite warm out here today, unlike where Kenny's at. But Bloody freeze now, are you? God. So the hat's going to have to go off to the side for a while. We'll bring it out later. Well, Hope you guys all had a wonderful Christmas. Fantastic holiday season. <laughs> There's my little Christmas prezzy. Ooh, <laughs> nice warm feet. My wife is jealous toasty already. <laughs> Got to be toasty, matey. Over here, I'll tell you. Ooh, nippy. <laughs> Let me turn off the auto gain control so I don't blow your ears away every time I vape. Yeah. There's so many things. I need to create a checklist for all the things I have to do before we go live for a stream because it's just like there's uh, this and this and this, just... and this and this and this. 
but sometimes I'll just think he does it deliberately, you know what I mean? Going, I'll sound awake, Kenny, up. You, know. <laughs> uh, you don't need any eardrums. I'm trying to get them to be equal. No, no. I know that the one's already blown, so I'm just trying to get the other one to, you know, be corrected a little bit. That way you can hear in stereo like we do. Oh, you want to be <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that's what the World Health Organization is trying to do. Did you see the latest shit that they're putting out there? I mean, <laughs> not even going to get into that crap because that's all it is. Nothing but a load of garbage. It, it always is, mate. I've, I've just lost total interest in the WHO period, you know, after the, the way they've been going on. They're just, nah. I think for me, yeah. when the COVID crap started, the, they were useless for that. So <laughs> they're useless as period. Lindsay Stroud just talked about that with Brent Stafford. They did it a live recording a while back and Brent edits and polishes it a little bit and then re-uploads it afterwards. Not like us. What the whatever we do live, you'll end up watching in the, in the replay crew. So, because I'm not sitting there and re editing five hours worth of content. Fuck that. <laughs> no. Anyway, just a little quick shout out for Vape and Bick. Obviously, he's, he's just put on there. He's in France attending his mom's funeral. We are so sorry for your loss, sir. Oh, You're I'm so sorry to hear about that, you, mate. All our thoughts are with you, sir. Yeah, that's something that's definitely what creeping up is the number of people that are passing away that, you know, I either worked with or I ran volunteer with the fire company or in a fire service. It's just oh, it's every week it's something else. Yep. Yeah. A local ridiculous. town. Honestly. There's a local town pub and this guy, you know, was best friends with all the cops. He does the back in the blue um, program and, and, you know, try and support the police and all this other stuff. And, uh, it was a customer of his he threw out the night before and for whatever reason yeah. this guy came back the next morning and shot him killed him dead why oh, the craziness in our world is just all around us and it's sometimes you got to cover your eyes and just like oh, oh Jesus. Yeah, this is what we're leaving for our children Scary times, mate. Scary times. And lots of departments. Listen, I'm a hopeful person, and I think that we can make a positive impact on society. We just got to keep grinding away to get some common sense back into society and the way things are and the way people think and the way that people react to each other. There's no reason for us to be so diametrically opposed to each other. It's, it's that old adage, isn't it? You know, you've got half a glass, is it half full or half empty? You know, which way do you look at it? You know I mean? I'm a realist. I know it's both. But when you're going to talk about yep. something, you want a positive impact on society. So let's emphasize the positive impacts and find a way to deal with the negative impacts. The solution isn't to just ban everything that's bad for you. Somebody made a post of just <laughs> not related to the advocacy community, just happened to make a post that said, Vaping is not safe. Okay, that's true. So my reply to him was, water is not safe. Water kills 236,000 people by year from drowning and is the third leading cause of preventable death on the planet. It's also used to torture people and can cause hyponatremia, which can kill half of those that get it. Nothing is safe. Plus the water that comes out your, the water that comes out your taps full of chemicals anyway. So it's not pure water. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I didn't even get into that aspect of it. But what's the point in saying vaping's not safe? Water's not safe. Yeah. You don't hear people talking about water and how bad it is for you, unless they have an ulterior motive and they're going to sell you the next new water filtration system, guaranteed to make it pure. I mean, the, the, I think the thing is, right, with all these negative people are like hitting it being, right? We, we know it's, you know, 90 or 95, you know, it's creeping up. I've heard like 99% safer than smoking in some cases. But 
At the end of the day, you're inhaling a foreign body into your lungs and exhaling a foreign body. So it's got risks like with everything. You know, if you drink this, you eat that, you eat this. They've all got risks, but they're all calculated risks. That's the thing. You know what I mean? They're Mate, when you're like, out shopping, do you do you see the local bus stop? Exactly. Just so what are you breathing stuff. in normally? Exactly. You know, you get somebody like Dusty Country Road lives cities. out in the Dusty Country Road where there is none of this mass pollution and all this other stuff. There's nothing but fresh air and farmland, right? So he has a significant advantage over me that lives in the city. I walk outside. I mean, even when I run my lawnmower, you can see the you can see a little bit of the smoke coming out of there. That's in the air that we breathe. Yeah. But you don't see people, city you know, sounding the alarm lawnmower. that we need to do away with all combustion engine lawnmowers and everybody goes to electric lawnmowers. I mean, we are kind of in, in the middle, like we're both, we've got like cities on our doorsteps, but we've also got countryside and fresh air on our doorsteps. So we're like suburban type of thing, you know, we're, yeah. we're not totally urban, we're not total. So we've got a bit of both, but when I visited um, the capital of London, Jesus Christ, I couldn't breathe. Honestly, you, you instantly do notice the difference when you go into places like that. The the air was heavy, it was humid, it was dank. You, you just couldn't breathe. It was horrible. I thought, how do people live in this? Just how They don't realize it because they breathe it in every single day. Exactly. One of the best pictures I saw during the whole COVID lockdowns was a picture of India, okay? I think it was Mumbai in India. And they showed a picture of it the day before the lockdown and then a day after the lockdown and all the smog within 24 hours had completely dissipated and it looked like a completely different city exact same picture being taken in the same bridge looking at the city and it was night and day difference without a doubt i without a doubt oh man so you know you know, they go on about this, that, and the other, you know, I mean, I think, I think now that they're starting to get wiser, because I think they linked some um, child who had uh, asthma, I think she pretty much like died because she was living in this city, breathing all this crap in. So, you know, they're starting to highlight it. And now we've got like this fucking, these clean air zones that are appearing in the cities now, or, you know, if you take a vehicle in that is polluting, you've got to pay a tax or a, a fee to drive into the city center. So, you know, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or not, you know, you just, it's an inevitable reality because we all, I don't care who you are, what political affiliation you have, whether you're the smartest person in the room or the dumbest, you know, class clown, you, you have to look at the fact that we all agree that we want to leave the place better than it was when we came here, right? We want our children to have a better output and a better outcome and a better living situation than what we have. And the reason why, there's a lot of our generation right now that are getting up on the soapbox is because for the first time in history, I cannot guarantee that my children are going to have a better planet and a better society to live in than what I grew up in. Our per parents were the last generation to truly see massive improvements over the previous generations. We're all going backwards. Yeah, I get that, but the, 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 big, the big thing that I think's turned on its head is the reduction of plastics. Plastics are the biggest, biggest, biggest pollutant on the planet. I mean, the city now was all our old generation that caused all this. But not really when it comes to that side of things. We had milk bottles in a bottle. You put them out every night and you got your milk bottle replaced and refilled every morning. They got recycled. You used to eat your blinging fish and chips on paper. You know, we didn't, you know, we didn't have plastic. Our soda there. bottles were all glass. When glass, I was growing up, it was, it was all glass. glass and all of it yeah, got recycled. Whatever yeah, whatever happened. Glass, glass is nothing bottles, but melted sand. Exactly. Why were all plastic? Why couldn't we keep glass? Why? It's about profit, corporate profits. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And hence, so you know, money is the root of all the evil. Environment. You know, that would damage the environment. Well, no, I think we were one of the biggest recyclers of our time when it comes to that okay industrial wise and vehicle wise yes we were heavy polluters you know we had i remember when we had leaded petrol you know that was toxic that stuff and all the you know the coal 
the coal industries, the shipbuilding industries, the steel industries, all them, yeah, cause the cause a lot of shit. Realistically, though, the, the cars now. nowadays are so much more energy efficient and cleaner yeah. than they've ever been. Yeah. You remember when we What's were that? kids growing up and, you know, breathing? You, I used to love the smell of a car running. You know, and that's the big thing that race track people have is this obsession and this love of the smell of unburned fuel. When you get a really rich carburation in the engine and you get that lot of horsepower, you're not burning 100% of the fuel and you smell that in the exhaust. None of the cars are like that nowadays. That's why I used to prefer two-stroke motorcycles rather than four-stroke because you've got that smell of a two-stroke. It was just, yes, that's a two-stroke. You can smell and it. And you know what? When we were smoking, I... there's a reason we had Zippo collections. Yeah. The smell of that petrol <laughs> is just like an intoxication. Yeah, man. It's, yeah, we've, we've done a bit of pollute, but we've also done a bit that we didn't pollute, so I don't know. There are solutions out there to make things much better. But the problem is, is because of the greed in, from these corporations that are out, just out there to make money, that's like we talked about last week about how all, you know, there's 10 corporations that control the entire food supply around the planet, right? And there's no reason why your prices in your grocery store should go up the exact same amount that our prices are going up. Unless you got somebody pulling the puppet strings on the top going, oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take control of this situation. And it's just the little peons Thank like you, us that have to suffer. You know, the talk like for us just to go green and all that, right? The reason people are not diving into this green scene is because of the sheer cost. It's, it's bloody expensive to go green, you know, solar panels on your house or wind turbines or all this. They cost an absolute fortune. And it, they reckon it takes about 20 years for them to pay for themselves anyway. So that's why people are mobbing it to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but let's be realistic here. The greedy corporations that are spending the money to put the windmills up, regardless of whether you like windmills or not, they are sitting there milking the things because before they had to pay for train loads of coal to keep their power plants running, right? Now they've got all these solar panels up, they got all these windmills up, and they cry the blues about having to reinvest in more of it, more of it. But what? guess what they're not doing in those plants that are generating all that power? There's no more cost to them. It's become a fixed cost That's over time. Yeah. It's like your mortgage, you know, they're they're breaking it down over a 20 year cost. And what they were dumping into coal and all these other, you know, natural gas, power plants and all this other stuff, they don't have to spend that money every month because mother nature yeah. provides the energy. All they had to do is capture it. Yeah. But they're not passing those cost savings over to us. They're pocketing oh, it. No, 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 Exactly. Like I say, it's, it's, it's the money in it. It's all a big, big money racket. Everything is. Paul, hello oh. and welcome to the stream. Jake Scrapwood, hello and welcome. Oh. Yeah, fun, cost of food is out of control. We talked about that, you know, the, the classic Home Alone, right? He went to the grocery store in Home Alone, spent $20. To go to the grocery store today and buy those exact same things now cost $73. Oh, it's just scary, man, isn't it? <laughs> Why does it cost that much? Efficiency's gotten so much better. Everything's manufactured in assembly lines that are all robotically done. The plants that manufacture laundry detergent and all that other stuff, they don't have hundreds of workers there anymore. Things should be cheaper, this is my, but they're not. This is, this is all post-COVID. No, it was, this has all happened since COVID. Before COVID, everything was rosy. Then since COVID, everything shot through. What's changed? COVID was a, a disease to humans, not a disease to making food, not a disease to shipping food, not, a, not it had nothing to do with food, but all of a sudden foods whoop through the roof. But Listen, I've read some scientific food. studies out there that they correlate the fact that, you know, any time that the government is forced to give a handout, the cost of everything goes up. And it's not because of economics. They tell you that it's economics because the average person doesn't look into things. They just believe whatever they hear, hook, line, and sinker, without any actual facts to prove it. Those of us that actually look into things go, 
Well, that has nothing to do with what actually happened. Because, see, the government prints money constantly to fund all these endless wars all around the globe. My entire life, the United States has been in some country fighting some ridiculous war for our protection. And there's no problem with them constantly getting budget increases year after year after year. We spend more than the next 30 countries combined for our war machine. With our military situation, with our military situation, I think if we were ever attacked, I'd be very worried because most of our armed forces aren't even here. They're all abroad fighting wars for some fucker else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hydro, yeah. Best thing I ever did was start listening to some of Kennedy's speeches, you know, whenever he started running for office. I wasn't listening to his campaign speeches. I was going to listen to speeches he gave five years ago and 10 years ago at universities and institutions yeah. and stuff. And for somebody that's fought, you know, for environmental protections, it's interesting to hear him speak and hear his solution to the problem we have nowadays. The problem that we have nowadays isn't the fact that, you know, we've got all these coal plants and we've got, you know, fracking going on and all this other stuff. The problem is all the worst polluting things in the planet are all subsidized. If they had to compete dollar for dollar unsubsidized with all the options out there, we wouldn't be doing that except as the last resort to manufacture energy. But because all their all of their operations are subsidized and they get tax breaks and they don't have to pay for the profit that they make, that they sell us all this stuff. And the government subsidizes fuel so that it keeps it under control when the economy's bad. The whole thing's been a bit manipulated front, manufactured, so that the people in an office can profit off of it. Without a doubt. This is Without all your fault, Kenny. We're here having this conversation yep. today because you started telling me about Russell Brand and I got to I got to watch his stuff and I got to listen to him. So I went from talking, you know, watching Kennedy's speeches and stuff and then Ramison or whatever the other Republican vice presidential <laughs> candidate to now I'm watching Russell Brand and, and that uh, Carlson dude that um, we talked about last week. Tucker Carlson. Listen to his his yep. things that he talks about. You know, it's it's how should we put it? Entertaining viewing, shall we say? <laughs> There's my viewing history right there. <laughs> and I know it's Boxing Day, and they're like, "Why are you celebrating Boxing Day? We're here in America. All we ever celebrate is Christmas, maybe Hanukkah. I don't know what that Kwanzaa is. That's not even a real holiday. Some people say. Listen, why can't you accept diversity? We're the only country in the world where that's the only celebration going on december 25th right you got australia new zealand all these other countries that celebrate boxing day right that's what we're here today to celebrate boxing day and for those of you in america that don't know what boxing day is it's kind of like black friday here in the states yeah, because now all you brits are sitting there going you son of a bitches i got this email this morning all the crap i bought last week for christmas <laughs> is now half off. <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with these people? <laughs> Bloody yeah, fools. We're, we're we're, we're, we have the sale after we've spent all the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they put ours right after Thanksgiving so that we spend our money for Christmas. And now the, yeah. the sad reality is nowadays, you go and you take pictures of the displays in Walmart, right? And then you go there Black Friday shopping, you take a picture of them. Half of the signs actually increase the price and have a sign saying that they dropped the price. <laughs> you legit could go pay more on Black Friday than you do if you bought it the day before Thanksgiving. That's fucking, they're paying mind games, man. I'm telling you, make it look a little cheap, and it's not. Hey, just like this one here, stop lying. Of course, the reason we're so excited today is because we are being joined for a world exclusive we have Tucker Carlson with us in studio, his first interview since leaving Fox News. Thanks for joining us, Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Russell Brand. As, as your friend and as someone who watches a lot of your videos, I'm, I'm amazed that I'm here. This is prettier even. I'm not going to give away critical 
details uh, and jeopardize your safety, but this is, if people could see where you're broadcasting from. You think it's a beautiful... I think it's beautiful. And that's not an overstatement. I think it's beautiful. Thank you so much, because I think we have a beautiful intention here. We're recognizing that independent media and independent politics are beginning to coalesce. It's becoming increasingly unlikely that you can report truthfully, honestly, and in good faith putting forward anti-establishment narratives without being attacked. Of course, we're going to talk about a lot of subjects here, but oh, and primarily we're going to want to talk about the reasons for you leaving Fox. We're going to want to talk about some of the reporting around Jan 6. We're going to want to talk about the attacks that you endured in your defense of the text messages around Trump. But I, first of all, I want to start off uh, by asking you, Tucker, how has it been in the six, mom six months or so since you left Fox? How have you been personally and how does it compare to the time when you left MSNBC in terms of its emotional impact on you? Well, I've been... F Listen... I watched this whole thing and I have learned so much that I kind of heard about, kind of knew about, but didn't realize the depth of the control around us until I started listening to these two guys talk. And it's just. Mind bugger, isn't it? <laughs> it's a brutal reality. I, you know, there are a lot of the things that I had thought about, you know, I'm like, if I talk about this on, on you know, YouTube and people are going to think I'm like some conspiracy nut job. <laughs> and then when I hear these guys talk, it's like, holy crap. I was only scratching the surface of what was going on. For example. A matter of time before the guy I'm looking went, they probably already hunting for him. That took a guy you now with all the shit he's he's been like seeing and you know what I mean? It's wow. <laughs> Just like JFK. Yeah. He's crying the blues because they won't they won't give him um, secret service protection. You know, when Obama ran, they gave him secret service protection in like hundred and thirty eight weeks out from the election. And, and Kennedy's crying the blues. He's like, you know, 30% of every dollar I get in from my donations has to go to pay for Secret Service protection because the government won't supply it. Jesus Christ. Well, that says something then, doesn't it? We don't want yet. <laughs> but they do have a point there. The independent movement is growing. You look at the election history over time and a third of the people never vote in any election, regardless of what their reasoning is for it, there's a 30% of the population in this country that is eligible to vote that doesn't go to the polls. And all it takes is one person to motivate them to show up and the race is over. It's no longer a two-way lock between the Dems and the Republicans. I've kind of been in the same boat myself because both the leading political parties here, I don't trust any of them. In fact, I don't really trust any of them now. So why should I give them the vote for somebody I don't trust? They were, you know, they're doing nothing for me personally. So why? I used to. I used to be a regular, regular hard labor voter when in the early days, out all the time, vote labor, labor, the working man's party. They're not the working man's party anymore. All got their noses in the gravy pot, man. That's what's the matter now. Listen, I was a diehard Republican when I was in high school. And when I was in middle school, I actually did the debate thing where I was Reagan. Debating against Mondale back then. And then when I realized that Reaganomics was a total disaster and the dumbest idea in the world is to give a rich man more money and it's going to trickle down to the poor is ludicrous. Especially when you look at the science and the facts, it's even worse than you think. So then I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to be a diehard Democrat because the Democrats looking out for the poor man, right? Unions and the average man, you know, blue collar workers. No, they're fucking you even harder than the Republicans are. Well, I think um, Margaret Thatcher destroyed the unions in this country. She just shut them all down, shut them down. Simple as that. Where is it? I forgot to put my notice up. What, what, what notice? What you put up? What you forgot? What you forgot? 
<laughs> this show contains a mature adult content not appropriate for minors or adults with a large stick up their ass. <laughs> I'm sitting And <laughs> here's your privacy policy. If you talk about something here and it gets featured on the stream, I'm not taking it down. It's going to stay there for as long as this video stays up. <laughs> And now that you've been notified of that, I want everybody's input today. I want to talk about, you know, we, everybody does at the end of the year, they do a summary of what took place this past year. What were the milestones that happened? Did we see it coming? Did we not see it coming? I want to talk about what do we do tomorrow? We know what happened. We know that in Texas, they are now changing the regulations and vape products are not allowed to have depictions of fruit or real food on the packaging. These laws are not, you know, isolated to just Texas. There's other parts of the world that have instituted these same laws because they don't want you to know when you vape an apple that an apple looks like an apple. No. What? Why? No, you, you can't have that. No, you can't have that. They're just going to put a banana on the set and confuse you even more. I mean, that's like, you know, these processed box foods that we buy that say all natural. Wink, 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 wink. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> oh, man. So I want your guys' impression on things. How do we make the situation better? Because all these assholes are making money on it. We just had the conversation before the stream started. We were just talking about how looking at the news, I'm like, okay, let's look at Boxing Day news. What do we got for Boxing Day news? And Kenny sat there and looked at it and says, Jewel seeks U.S. authorization for age-restricted menthol pods. He's sitting there laughing at that. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, yeah, I know all about these. These are Jewel 2. You get to register them. And only so many registrations are going to be allowed per person. And the pods only work in a registered device. And they're taking these 18 milligram pods and they're going to be getting FDA approval here in the States. And then I realized it's all charade. Exactly. It's all crap. <laughs> it's all a charade. You know, everybody says, oh, well, we got tobacco control and we've actually got, you know, the tobacco industry. Big Tobacco is sitting there sponsoring advocacy against all this crap. Sort of. They're, they're sponsoring some advocacy, but at the same time that they're sponsoring advocacy, they're sending their lawyers out to get each other's products taken off of the market. And you've got R.J. Reynolds going around telling the FDA, you need to remove all products that don't have a PMTA. So goodbye, Geek Vape. Goodbye, Vupu. Goodbye, Vaporetto. Because none of them have PMTA authorization. Only R.J. Reynolds, only Philip Morris International, and only British American Tobacco have their products authorized for sale. Everything else, black market product. You just don't realize it yet. Pretty much is at this current moment. I think you're getting black mark. Tell me to authorize. <laughs> Paul's right. It's time to fuck some shit up. Hell, hell yeah. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. We're going to get to a tipping point where they're going to screw enough people at the same time that everybody's going to get pissed off. And these jerk offs that are in office right now are going to get voted out. They've got to. Let's go soon. And I was talking like about not voting and shit, but on the other side of the coin to get rid of these people you've got there in a sense. So, <laughs> but the thing is, who do you vote for instead? That's the question. Whoever's not in office. Yeah. It's literally at the point now where any change is good change. It used to be, you know, you, you pick the devil you know as opposed to the devil you don't, right? You stick with what you know, even though they're fucking you because the other guy might fuck you harder. Yeah. But when situation gets to the point where they're already screwing you so bad that anything's going to be an improvement. Well, hey, bastard, hello and welcome. Voting. Steve Lane, hello and welcome. We'll have to start voting for the monster Raven Moon <clears throat> party over here. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
bunch of loonies is all we got to deal with here. Wet weather for Kwanzaa and Boxing Day. The Richmond north of Richmond are dealing with the nice 50 degree temperatures outside. While the rest of the country doesn't matter what the weather is because they're screwing you left and right. <laughs> Ronnie Reed, hello and welcome Even to the, the stream. Hello, Ronnie. How are we doing? Yeah, we just had this rain here yesterday. Thank goodness it's gone. Oh, and no, listen, I know, I know that you know you guys are used to watching your football games during, you know the the whole season. So, just to make you feel a little bit better, there you go. Empty stadium. <laughs> what do you think? You can watch the football game while we're sitting here having our chat. Getting on my soapbox. Oh, job. I'll just be sitting there. <laughs> it's Boxing Day. What do you think? What do you authorize in the United States? Wow. Do you know how hard it is to I watch a football here, game here in the States? Oh, I'm sorry. For those of you in the States, a soccer game? A soccer. You call it soccer. Soccer game. <laughs> yeah. I was always too fat to be a soccer player. So I became a referee when I was, you know, in grade school. Used to love it. How's, Went to how's the German fields, the German cultural society. Yeah, I was all right. I was an all right footballer, me dear. You know, I was a good left winger, as we say, because I'm naturally left footed. And I was a pretty good goalkeeper as well. Yeah. Oh, yes. I was a goalie because it was a thing. It was a position ago. you didn't have to run a lot, <laughs> except when the ball was coming. <laughs> Get <to hell. laughs> Listen, man, all those fat kids had to stay in somewhere. I was left. I was. I was very. I was always tall and thin. I was big and three stone dripping wet. Me, man. <laughs> Not me, mate. I was always the biggest, widest person there. Well, not necessarily. There are a couple of kids oh. that were bigger than me in school. Unfortunately, the guy, the only one that's left, is actually in a nursing home right now because he never got over his weight. He never got any significant weight loss. He just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It happens to us all, I suppose. You know what I mean? It's just one of them things, isn't it? Exactly. You, you know what's missing from this whole situation, though? You can't you can't sit here and watch a football match without something to drink, right? <laughs>entertainment today we once again revisited our pennsylvania dutch friends and uh, found ourselves some beautiful salted caramel cream liqueur made with real salted caramel and fresh dairy cream and i think they're hiding the alcohol by volume it's a brand new flavor for us to try out 12.5 percent alcohol by volume and since I didn't get to enjoy it yesterday, Pennsylvania Dutch eggnog made with eggnog. real dairy cream, rum, brandy, and blended whiskey. 
And this one is 14.75% alcohol by volume. How about you, Kenny? What do you got? Well, I do I do have a sneaky apology because I have kind of started a little bit early, you know, today, because obviously I'm on me, me Crimbo holiday, so to speak. So I've, I've got a bit of the old um, the 1664. But the main attraction for the day, and this is probably one of my favorite, favorite, favorite beverages or indulgences of all time, and it's uh, Bailey's. Bailey's. Mate, I got some of that in the fridge. I, I love this stuff. I can drink this till it comes out my ears. Um, it's not the flavoured one. It's the original Irish cream. Um, it is 17% by by volume of alcohol. And um, I've already had a little sample. But as you can see, I've got my nice little tumbler with a couple of bits of ice in. And then it's just going to get... There you go. Oh, God, I love this stuff. There you go. <laughs> mm, damn. Mm, mm. God damn it, as they say in your part of the world. God damn it. <laughs> Delicious. Fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, I think we'll just have a bear. A little bit of a toast, eh? Mm. Hi, mate. It's to your health, sir, and, uh, and a Merry to Christmas your health. to you all and all. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Mm. Oh. God, I love eggnog. Oh. I love that stuff, like... <laughs> This stuff Ooh, isn't well, as well, thick well, as well, regular well, eggnog well, that you buy in the store, you know, regular generic eggnog. I was watching Wayne the other day, DIY or Die, trying to come up with a good um, eggnog recipe, you know, on his live stream. And he's like, it's just something you can't get right. It's that thick, creamy flavor inside your mouth. It's not buttery. It's legit a nice, dense cream that just, I honestly think, is impossible to replicate inside of a vape. It's too thin. Even this stuff here is thin. And the thing about it here is, is you have the rum and the brandy and the whiskey in there so that it completes the flavor palette. It doesn't let you know that it's not a true legit eggnog. Mm. I mean, I'm not really a whiskey fan now, but that's, I, 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 could, oh, I could drink that. I've bit. never been a whiskey fan. My wife was talking That's about the other day about how like when you go get some Crown Royal Apple. I'm like, oh no. Yeah, I don't like that, I don't like Crown Royal. I don't like whiskey. Don't, not a I bourbon person. Do not mind that. I do not mind that at all when it's like that though. Bloody lovely. <laughs> I'm driving tomorrow. <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> You cannot do that with a disposable. No. Mm -mm. Ooh, the head rush. You get the nick rush and then you get the alcohol all at the same time. That's not an enjoyable experience. And for somebody our age. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you beg to differ. <laughs> Much, much better. Oh. Finish off my candy cane. I wanted to have some gingerbread, but I ran out of the one shot. Well, funny enough, that's what I've been vaping over the holidays, candy cane and ginger. <laughs> nice. Go. I've still got some. I've still got some. It's still, oh man, it's awesome, man. Now it's, ooh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Still got it. Still got some. Still got Listen, some. Listen, I'm finishing off the last of my candy cane that we mixed up. That's the one shot. And we forgot to do this last week. So we're going to mix this up today. Oh, the coffee tobacco. Ah, the yes. The coffee tobacco. And that. I'm, I'm not, not scared of tobacco it. anymore. I finally got over it. <laughs> it's only taken four years. There you go. 
Oh, I have nothing to do with tobacco. I'm not vaping tobacco. No, no, I'm not vaping tobacco. So we're going to try that out today. And then we'll do another random recipe. And Kenny's package got held up in customs. They wanted to extort 30 pounds off of the mate for a gift being sent to him. No, no, you're not allowed to have gifts until you pay the taxes on the gift. What? 50 quid, tax me 50 quid? 50 pounds. 50 quid. 49.99 tax out of people. I thought it was only supposed to be like 20%. Nope. (laughs) There was tax and there was... They didn't like my valuation of it. That's what it is. Yeah. The bozos didn't like my valuation. On the customs form, the total, I think, came to like $188 or whatever. Right? And some odd cents. They like, uh uh-uh. No, no, no. A CPU is more than $50. We're going to charge you the retail price of that CPU. Ah, what was it again? I'll probably just see if I'll find uh, I'll have a look. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. We've uh, we got that there. Not sure exactly what I paid for it, if I can find it. Fuck me, how many screenshots have I got in here? Jesus Christ. Oh, the bands with the Roblox. Holy moly. Let's look at all these Roblox ones. What they have they been doing to my computer? Hang on. Let's see if I can find it. Where was the fuck was that? It? Let's have a look. Mm. What we got here? Howie. Nope, that was me A Sig one. Where the fuck? Ah, no worries, that? mate. So for those of you out there that haven't already dropped them in, please put your hand checks in on the Facebook post, or you can put it on the Twitter post post whatever you want we're gonna go and check out the hand checks that we have going on and i mean it would be really nice for us to sit here and what do you got nope thought i had it i haven't got it thought i had it but never mind bollocks with it i don't know where it's gone (laughs) just invoices for old stuff i need to get rid of (laughs) Because when I purchase stuff online, I've, when I've done it and I've finished, I'll take a screenshot of the receipt and all that crap, and I just haven't um, <laughs> deleted half of them. There's fucking hundreds of them. Jesus. Whoops. <laughs> what the hell? I didn't get rid of half of them. You don't want to be hard drives, chock a block. <laughs> what was that for? <laughs> Sorry, the <laughs> game is actually pre recorded from three years ago. Do you, know, uh, do you know when I got me hog? Do you know when I bought me hog? Yeah. <laughs> if you look, right? <laughs> Where is it? We were actually on the show when I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually live when I actually bought it. We nice. 101. <laughs> I just realized that's where that come from. <laughs> what the hell, eh? But no, I mean, I, I, I don't mind paying a bit of tax on it, man. If you've got it, it's still worth every penny, you No, know, in my eyes, without a doubt. So, no sweat. Here you go, mate. Billy Lee no Rice. At all. Oh. Let me uh, pull this off of there so I can read it. While we check it out. There you go. This is from Billy Lee Rice. This is her Pink Panther Stubby 21, number 327, with a Steam Crave RBA inside with some Grim Greens Uncommon number six. See, you know, that's that's one device I've never touched yet, like the Burrow Tank devices not. I've never touched them yet. I never got into the burrow or the billet box. Yeah. That's an expensive rabbit hole. I don't know. I mean, I mean, they, they could be good. They probably are good, but I've, but I've never, never tried them. Never, ever tried them. And William Dobson nice. dropped Very in nice. his lovely tank. 
Oh, yes. Well, I can kind of sympathize them there because that's what's now sitting on my Hog 400. My lovely little treat to myself. That's what's sitting the Steam on the Crave right now. Titan set up on there. Gorgeous. I'm going to have to pull mine out. Get it all set up. There, mine's sitting on me hog 400 at the minute. There you go. Beautiful. Delicious. Listen, I was always told whenever I first got into vaping how good Steam Crave stuff is. And if you're, you know, trying to get ready for the vape apocalypse, it is the best product to get because they're machined fantastically. And it was only my ignorance that disappointed me. Once I found out the right coils to put in each of those tanks. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. mm. Quality, man. Quality. Delicious. Quality, quality. Just got quality road all over it. Fantastic stuff, man. Sure is. And it's got a decent price. <laughs> all right. yeah, I love that. The old steam clear on that boat. I can't leave rest. Billy Lee Rice <laughs> brought in her dad jokes for today. I can't live without you. Rest in peace. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Damn. My mind says get up, but my body says bite me. Oh, yeah. I'll be more time later. Holy shit, 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 shit. <laughs> hey Pooh, you in there? Oh, I like that. <laughs> wait, there you I really think it's time to take the warning labels off of everything and let stupidity work itself out of the gene pool. <laughs> That would be so good, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, man. I'm all for that. Got to be done on it. Half load Harry got a real truck. Well, holy fuck. <laughs> That's long. <laughs> That's just way too long. <laughs> nah, man. Would you rather see him load it all into a little pickup truck? Destroy another vehicle? I know, but nah, it just doesn't look right that like at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this old. Do you remember those? Oh my god. Game. I had to hook up the, the Commodore 64 oh, to the TV. You have a 75 ohm to 300 ohm adapter. That's the ones. Yeah. Just to switch it over there. Dink at the back. And, you know, I always thought this was the coolest thing in the world until I realized it's completely illogical. <laughs> Hope you experience the most pleasant celebration of your planet's winter solstice. Oh, yeah? How come it's summer in Australia? It's not winter in Australia. The nope. most illogical new year. Oh, yeah. Here's some brutal reality for you. Missed one day of work and my paycheck was $200 less. Work one extra day and you only made $7.20 more. Yeah, the tax man made the under 190 fucking hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Someone keeps sending me celery and I don't know who it is. Sounds like you're being stalked. Oh, Jesus <laughs> I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> the best reason to drive a car with a bench seat. And future generations will never be able to relate. Oh, yes. <laughs> no gear stick to get in the way. There was a reason I drove a 79 Mercury Marquis station wagon in high school. <laughs> Plenty of room, I take it. 
<laughs> hey, man, I wasn't born lazy. You trained me. That's the we do, don't we? We spoil our little poochies. I'm here for tech support to remove all your cookies. <laughs> well, there's getting your money's worth out of a rental. How is that actually pulling all that? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's actually not that hard. Just don't want to put the I fuel into new, it. I, I think a new clutch might be needed after that for a while. <laughs> yeah. Those you halls have good tranny coolers on them. Especially when you're pulling away, right? That clutch. There you go, mate. Free wood. Yeah. I'm definitely more into the line of, you know, removing the warning labels on everything. Let society work its way out of the situation we're in. But the thing so, is, well, how long would it fucking take? <laughs> mate, do UK websites use biscuits instead of cookies? Of course. <laughs> I figured as much. All girls with long hair must be tied up. Thank you. Really? What? Whatever rocks you bought. <laughs> well, now. Just sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> yeah, I bet we will. We are out lettuce till Wednesday. Please enjoy some spinach with your sub instead. Okay. What? Dyslexic seems to ring a bell here. <laughs> Free one night stand. Oh, I'm up for that. <laughs> yep, sign me up. <laughs> Talk about some hard wood. <laughs> oh, God. No left turn. Green light left turn. What? Ooh. That's going to cause a few... Um... Is anybody home? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Who has the massive deficiency of brain cells to mount that sign next to that light? Well, it's the old saying the lights are on, but no one's home. Hey, man, a joke doesn't become a dad joke until it's full grown. Oh, so man. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Especially some of the stuff you be putting up. And for you <laughs> ladies out there, I definitely always consider both ends of the spectrum here. I have an expert wife tip for you. To keep your man busy for hours, simply dripping some used oil under his truck is all it takes. <laughs> so true. Like, where where did that, that come, come from? Did I move the truck since <laughs> yeah. it started? <laughs> definitely right, that one. And it gets even worse because once your wife's pulled this trick on you, you start ignoring the oil spots underneath. And next thing you know, you're driving around and that power steering leak that was letting you know that it was leaking because of the oil spot underneath, you ignored it because you thought, oh, my wife's playing tricks on me again. So you're out driving about going to pick up your weekly groceries and poo, there goes your power yeah. steering because you just lost all the fluid on the rusted line that <laughs> could have spent 16 bucks Thanks to fix. Like yeah, no, now I got to replace the power steering pump too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. down. <laughs> oh. There's something happening here for what it's worth. There you go, mate. I found the perfect cell phone for you. You said you don't like texting or this other oh. bullshit. There you go. Yeah. Zzt, 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 zzt. Brilliant. Simplicity. That Cody could be a dial cell phone. Imagine, imagine if that could be a big hit, that over here. <laughs> <laughs> More stupidity for you. Warning recovery points are for cosmetic. Use only. Recovery or towing from these points are strictly prohibited by the manufacturer. What? Uh, 
It's like cars nowadays. You buy cars and they don't even have a spare tire. What the fuck? Yeah. Go buy a quad. You'll see one of these lovely bumper stickers. So Meanwhile, when we were growing up, this is what we had to look forward to for Christmas. It's a blast from the past, isn't it? For football game. Do you have one of these or something similar? A little football game? Pocket football? Uh, nah, not really. Not, not no. a, I mean, nah, nah. I think I was just the, 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 the lines, the tennis. Ding, ding. You know, the ding, ding, ding with the tennis. Saying the cloth is coming to town. <laughs> Say that to his face. <laughs> hey, mate. This is a ship shipping ship shipping shipping ships. Say that faster. <laughs> this is a ship shipping ship shipping shipping ships. <laughs> ship, ship, Shit. Ship, 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 ship. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Bob's on Bob's tail ring. Wow. Making spirits bright. Hell yeah. And for the laziest boy out there, here's the perfect Christmas present. That is, yep. Yeah. I could go with that. Why, yes, sir. I do have a pot to piss in. <laughs> exactly. Don't know how, but I have. <laughs> and there's always oh one God. avid collector out there that goes just one step too far. Holy fuck. Yeah. When your station wagon isn't big enough, you buy another station wagon, chop it up, make a trailer to attach to your station wagon. Mm. Oh, see. <sighs> How many drinks have I had to be looking at that thing? Oh, wow. Well, fortunately, the goal in life is to build a life where you don't need a vacation from it. I could sit there happily. Easy. No problem at all. Yeah. And have you heard the latest news? A federal district judge named Loretta Preska has become a superhero. Preska just made a ruling that will unseal secret court documents that name over 170 people who were involved with Jeffrey Epstein. How many do you think that she should be giving extra security? <laughs> Never going to happen, is it? Nope. So, for your entertainment, I found yourself a beautiful Peppa Pig jigsaw puzzle. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, hi, this thanks bit for go checking here. This bit go there. Garbage. <laughs> and I always wondered what happened to that wrench. Now I know. Holy fuck. How do you get a whole wrench in a tie like that? How is that even feasible? I don't know, mate. Never a dull moment. That's just... Wow. Not a creature was stirring, except for mom, who was busting her ass to make it all happen. Yeah. I can agree with so that. So what happens one. if you would know. have, you know, fairy tales and children's stories that actually told the truth? Like this false expectation that my wife had for our Christmas celebration with three dogs. No. And the reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is this? That's what the dogs, the dogs began. Get this off us. <laughs> and there we are, quietly observing everything that we foretold unfold after everyone thought we were all nuts. So true. Told you. Speaking Bloomberg. Which, Go Gates. I've got some munchies a day. Look, Christmas munchies a day. Mini Twiglets. Ooh. That looks delightful. They look like the tree, actually. I mean, the rural, <laughs> but the taste fantastic. <laughs> And for those of you that don't speak Hungarian, it's not your new. This is very good. 
Is it very good or is it very bad that this is the society that we have to live and grow up in right now? The sign says, Hafazol Vigelej. If you're cold, take one. Something. Volamit. Take one something. Okay? Hasaret ni akarsz hoz valamit meleget. Ha segíteni akarsz hoz valami meleget. If you want to help, bring something warm and leave it here for the next person that might need it. That's cool, like. Eh? You know, we've seen the pop-up libraries that show up on street corners and blocks and housing plans. You know, you, you take a book, you leave a book. But this is the world we're living in right now that they legit have to put this on a public street, letting people know that if you're cold, take a jacket, please. And if you're well-to-do and you'd like to help, why don't you leave something here for somebody that might need it? Like in the UK, the been food banks have just exploded there's more people use food banks than ever known and that's people yeah. not just who are not working or on, on what you call welfare but there's working families that are actually going to food banks because literally with all the costs of everything else you know they just can't afford to run a home no and heaven forbid you have a sick child that needs some medication or you're taking care of your elderly parents. There's just not enough money to go around for a lot of these people. And just to know you because, like I say, your country, my country, you know, one of the richest countries on the planet, and yet we are with all this shit going on. People are fucking using food banks to fucking feed themselves. Come on, man. Yeah. Bullshit, man. Absolute bullshit. I was watching one of those shows with Tucker Carlson in it, and I don't remember who he was having the conversation with. But during the conversation, they revealed that to solve the homeless problem in the United States would only cost about $20 billion. That's it. Problem solved. $20 billion. Mm -hmm. well, we don't have money for that. But we do have money to buy a beautiful brand new tank with a 35 gigawatt laser on it that we're going to send to some country somewhere for their war effort. But we don't have $20 billion to solve the homeless problem. This is a classic example. Yeah, I've just noticed the news. Like, obviously, the war is still going on in Ukraine. And they're saying that all the the help from the Western world starting to dry up because of the Iran Gaza conflict. Their interests have now gone to that one now. You know what I mean? Plus, Israel, Middle East, there's oil out there, isn't there? So, hello. Well, it might also have something to do with the fact that, you know, the uh, president of Ukraine has just abolished all religion except for the one prominent religion that he wants to have in the country. So where's the democracy and freedom when they're abolishing all religion except for a designated religion? I don't say that, like, I don't say that, but even so. I mean, I mean we're getting funded towards that. if you want populist support, why are you going to go and ban a bunch of stuff that is meaningless to your cause? That's just true, no. Is he just clutching at straws to try and get some more attention? You didn't do you? Well, some people out there say that oh, all attention is good attention, regardless of why you get it or what bad things you do to get it. That all attention is good attention. I think that's a load of shit. Whatever oh, happened really? to the people's moral compass and just doing the right thing? for all the wrong reasons. All right. So what did we miss there in chat? Mallory Gates, New Year's Eve forecast, mostly drunk with a slight chance of passing out. I like it. <laughs> I think I can get started right now. <laughs>
William Dobson says, you buy a car nowadays and it says, don't drink fluid out of the battery. <laughs> I wonder why. Because the powers to be enjoy the fact when they have a stupid society that doesn't fight them tooth and nail over every ridiculous thing they want to implement. This is it. <laughs> Mad, mad world. Jake Scrapwood said that he's just happy that he works till Friday and he's going to be off work for nine days in a row. Woohoo. Doesn't know what he's going to do for nine days. I wouldn't know what I'd do, without a doubt. <laughs> I would find something to do, even if it is sitting doing nothing. I have a list a mile long of the things I need to do. I don't even know where to start half the time. Me too. Hot diggity dog, vaping snowman. Hello and welcome. Well, that was a nice short dad joke as opposed to last week. Last week we drug that thing out for what, two hours? <laughs> No. Why do you not have boxing day in America? Like, what, what's the crap with that? What's... We've what never had the aristocracy that used to hand boxes to their peasants. Hmm. Yeah. I, I always could, I mean, I always thought it was a worldwide national holiday. I don't know why, but I just did. I died in my head. Just like Christmas. UK. Australia, Canada, they all celebrate Boxing Day. Not here in the States, though. We washed our hands of the whole aristocracy situation. Moved on to an oligarchy. Weird. I'll, I'll just, I'll, I mean, my ignorance, I just thought it was just a national thing globally. For all those that celebrated Christmas, obviously. Yeah, because I was scratching my head last week when I saw the thing, you know, that there was a customs duty on it. The next thing I know, I checked it in the evening and it was already paid. And I'm like, okay, well, it's the updated delivery day, right? It was supposed to get there in four days from the time I shipped it. Yeah. Won't be there till next Thursday. I'm like, why is it not going to get there till Thursday? And I'm like, dummy, UPS doesn't work on the weekend, so they're Saturday and Sunday out of the picture. Monday's Christmas, Tuesday's Boxing Day, both holidays in the UK. <laughs> So it's not going to start moving again until Wednesday. So Thursday is the earliest day he could possibly get it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only problem with UPS. They don't work the weekends. Even Saturdays, if you get a Saturday delivery and pay the extra charge for it, they only operate until noon on Saturdays. Fucking hell. Yeah. Amazon, we're like pretty much seven days a week, period. Yep. Yeah, my oh, white shirt that I got her for Christmas literally arrived Christmas Eve, five o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. well, good timing there. She's just getting off work. We'll have had Christmas day off. We've got to day off. Then back to work tomorrow. And then we've got, I think it's New Year's Day. I think I think we might be working New Year's Eve. Could, could be right, hi. I think we only just got New Year's Day, but no like long term like time off, really. Well, yeah, crazy man. I remember the days you used to have a factory shutdown, your fortnight shutdown for Christmas, everything was shut for two weeks. Brilliant, place was deserted. Christmas Day, the my day, you never used there was, there was never a soul out, it was like a ghost town. Not a soul. Being out there today, fucking hell, you think it was just a normal shopping day? There was fucking traffic everywhere. I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, matter of fact, I saw the propaganda on the news said, talking about how there's going to be record profits in Australia for Boxing Day sales. People Not in the us. UK, though. See, this is why this... This is why this government laughs at us, right? They talk about austerity and everybody's going, oh, we can't afford a piss, we can't afford this. Everybody's going out and driving around in a fucking new car. Everybody's out spending fucking hundreds on fucking Christmas. And the government's saying, well, 
how are you struggling then? You're spending a fucking fucking... Do you know what I mean? They're like, you think we're stupid or what? Crazy, man. It's Christmas. You have to get everybody something. <sighs> when I was growing up, if you had a car, it was a luxury. Not an essential, it was a luxury if you could afford a car when I was growing up. Yeah, meanwhile, every family member's got their own car now. Yeah. A holiday. Everybody thinks they're entitled to a holiday. A holiday to us was a luxury. Even if you did, you were lucky if you could go camping at the seaside. That was a luxury. Then we're going abroad. Package holidays, never thought of an holiday. Yeah. Our expectations have grown over time, but that's because you could afford it at one point. Ten years ago, all those things were not even a thought on your mind. Matter of fact, 10 years ago, we probably spent 10 times as much as we did this year for Christmas. Well, that's down to economics, isn't it? I mean, the current state of what's going on, I mean, everybody's tightening their belts. Yeah. But I mean... But the sad reality is 25% no. of the population doesn't have any room to tighten the belt. The belts are already tightened as much as they were. They're all flooding right now. Oh. They're all suffering. No doubt. The difference is, oh, is the middle class now is feeling the pinch and is tightening their belts to make ends meet. Yeah. Yeah, I can see where you come around with that, like. Yeah. I even, there was, no, I you, I even seen an advert right on, on YouTube today. You know, it's, it's probably right. It's this scientist, he's, 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 um, used to work for some power companies, invented some kind of portable heater that can heat your own room as, very, as cheap as possible. And, he, and one of the statements was saying, when heating your home will soon be a luxury. I thought, fuck What? Me. Imagine that. When heating your home could soon be a luxury. And I'm thinking, you know what it is? You're probably not far off that, the way it's going on. Because our heating, our gas and price um charges are going to go up again i think it's in january because that's when the cap fucking finishes they're going to up the cap now so it's going to go up again to fuck knows what we got ourselves screwed here by our county increasing property taxes 30 percent because see what happens over the last two decades they haven't bothered to increase taxes at all they just kept making do and making cuts and tightening their belt well, they're finally at the point now because of the economic crisis that we're living in that they can't tighten the belt anymore. They can't lay any more people off because the only people that are left are essential people that already haven't gotten a raise in five years. So the county commissioner said, well, we're going to have to make a course correction. And not only are we making a course correction based on where we stand and what we need for next year's budget, we're also going to make up for the fact that we haven't raised taxes in 20 years. So they raised the, like a 5.8% mill increase on your property taxes. And then they created a separate 4.8% millage increase for inflation. So literally your property taxes are not going up 30%. So if your property taxes were $2,000, now it's $2,600. Yeah. The way it is now, your energy bills are now pretty much neck and neck with your mortgage slash rent. Yeah. That, that never used to happen. The two big chunks that's coming out your income now is them two. And obviously, when we've had the inflation, when people's mortgages have nigh on friggin' doubled, do you know what I mean? Fuck sake, man, honestly. Mad. My mortgage payment used to be $500 a month. Now it's up to $750. Wow. And the only thing that's, that's gone up are taxes, property taxes, an escrow account, and your insurance cost. Mm -hmm. It's fucking scary, man, isn't it? Absolutely scary. Yep. Fucking unbelievable. It's well, the aristocracy now, better look out because there's a revolution coming. There's only so much of this people can take was... before they, st they lash out. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you've now got to prioritize your bills. You know, you think, well, what's more important? Rent keeping the roof on my head? Electric keeping my house warm? Whoa, where do I go? You know what I mean? That's the choice people are having to make. Mate, it's getting to the point now. I've only got, you know, a couple of years left to pay off my mortgage, right? When I get done paying off my mortgage, 
I'm going to have to continue making those same payments that I originally had on the mortgage just to cover the property taxes. Exactly. It's going to shite. You're no better off, are you? What? <laughs> maybe, maybe just remortgage and carry on paying your fucking mortgage for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? No. No. But what it's going to cost. Unbelievable, man. That's an idea. If you're gonna if you're gonna pay, be paying like five hundred dollars a month for like for your taxes for as long as you're there, remortgage and that five hundred dollars a month, build yourself a new studio in your backyard, make it worth your while. <laughs> man, don't don't be talking about that because I've already got plans for next year. My wife gave me one cage. I had already previously bought a cage on Black Friday shopping, and I got one more to get for the other camera so that I can get that. I've got another microphone arm to put here to replace this big monstrosity with a short, short, small one. And there's two microphones I'm, I plan on getting next year. It's the RE20, which is what Brent Stafford uses in his news reports, and the Shure SM7B, because I want to use that for the podcast. I'm going to have to try and change this podcast a little bit, get a little more interest out there, because... I put it out there. The first one I put out there had 125, 130 views. The last one's only got 70 views on it. So it's like, okay, I need to pick something a little more interesting. But definitely plan on doing that next year. And the other thing that we talked about earlier is, you know, I'm starting to run out of retro vape stuff. So we'll do like a retro build during the during our yeah. vlog. And I also want to get more into the hobby crafting aspect of things. Not just, you know, DIY mixing. But we're actually going to formulate recipes some weeks. We'll keep trying, you know, plucking at it until we get one that actually is a, a winner. Now that I've gotten more and more familiar with things. And I want to get um, building coils. I bought this beautiful lathe from Coil Factory. Nice. I want to actually start using it and uh, make some coils. That's, well, it's another string to your bow, shall we say. Not and the fun. other aspect is, you know, I'm going to have to activate the subscription things for this channel because I can't keep dumping thousands upon thousands of dollars every single year into this channel and not get anything back in return. Well, this is it. There's that as well. Like, without a doubt. So. It just, that's what people like. A lot of people don't realize the cost of running a channel. Regardless, you know, whatever YouTube channel, you've got your expenses. Not just setup expenses, but you know, everybody says that's just a camera, use your phone, but you know, you you're always upgrading, you're always trying to better yourself. You know, for, and it's you know. expected for you to be able to upload it at least at a certain quantity. There's a lot of people that are moving to 4K. None of my cameras are 4K. Yeah, yeah the Canons does do output 4K 30, but what's the point? I mean, most people aren't watching it on 4K TVs. Then you have the other aspect of it is you have the monthly costs. You know, I could get away with just, you know, $50 a month internet service. But because I do a weekly live stream where I've got video signal coming in from Kenny and then having to broadcast out a live stream, I got to pay for $140 a month for freaking gigabit internet, even though it's not gigabit upload speed. But I have to pay for that download speed to get 40 meg upload speed. Freaking Comcast Monopoly. It's all bullshit anyway, you know, because all your internet providers say up to. You're never getting the full speed that's here anyway. That's why they go up to the little disclaimer. Mate, our neighboring to. town has both Comcast and Verizon because their city town council hasn't been bought out by Comcast and have an exclusive contract just because the city services get free internet. They're willing to fuck every resident in the town. Our neighboring town has Comcast and Verizon. And there's a price war going on right now. Right now, for $70 a month, you can get gigabit internet, both upload and download from Verizon, whereas Comcast has it gigabit download speed and 40 meg upload speed. You can get TV and phone service, and Comcast will throw in security, phone, security service to try and match what Verizon gives you. Meanwhile, we're stuck here paying, oh, the shit, that looks good. Meanwhile, we're stuck paying $130, $140 a month just for internet. It's crazy. I mean, I'm paying about 80, 
60, 70 quid a month for mine, which you can get much cheaper anywhere else, but it's just basically for the speeds. That's all it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. But with us, with me, it's not so much like for me on YouTube. It's just for the amount of devices connected. There's just so much connected to it. That's why we kind of need it because we've got mobile phones, we've got games consoles, we've got computers, we've got laptops. There's just so much. And your TV is all streaming off yeah. the internet now, too. Yeah, you've got your TV, so and your fire sticks and all that shit. So, you know, it's wow. I think of a, a slow internet speed would just crash. You know what I mean? It'd just die. It's just stuff that's connected to it. Well, everything would become pixelated. Because if you get a lot of people on the thing and they're all using it, then like, you know, your video feed to here is going to slow down and you won't be able to send your full signal that your camera is sending to your computer. Because your computer is going to go, oh, I don't have enough consistent bandwidth to be able to send it at full resolution. So I got to cut it back to make it a smaller stream to get it to fit. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's people which are a little bit blurry tonight. I don't know why. That's why I've just, I've, that's why I've just wiped my lens. I thought I'm a bit blurry. Oh, why I'm a bit blurry tonight. Hmm. Interesting. Now, what's interesting, mate, is that what I see on the screen in front of me is not the same as what I see on Firefox yeah. for the Ninja. Ninja's a lot clearer. I mean, Ninja feed, me OBS and Ninja, me, you, us, us and Mint, but just the one in the corner. And uh, obviously the YouTube, that's something a bit blurring. I don't know why. Yeah, there you go. Blurry. Jake's going to build a new mod. I would love to build one for the lathe. My wife does epoxy how... stuff for crafting. I'd like to use that to build a case for the DNA board I have. I would like to show you how to build a tube mod, right? At a price that's cheaper, that doesn't justify the prices that these people are charged for mech mods. Five, six hundred pound or whatever for a, for a, a mech tube mod is bullshit. The only money they're paying for there is the material. But yeah, your material, different grades of materials cost more, but fucking come on, man. The money they're charging for that, especially when they're on a CNC machine as well. Fuck off. Yeah, 50 quid in materials and machine time, and you got yourself a beautiful device. Yeah. And they're charging, what, fourfold profits on it? Really? Come on. Oh, yeah. All right, a little bit of advocacy for you. I'm not even going to roll the bumper. We'll just take a look at this. I happen to see this posted and watch this earlier. Ooh. Ooh. Vaping is everywhere. Here on the busy streets of London, you often encounter a cloud of sweet-smelling vapour or an abandoned e-cigarette on the floor. But the industry is undergoing major sweet change. Sweet-smelling vapour. Governments look to restrict the sale. Of course. This, I think, is ridiculous. No smoking, e-cigarettes, or vaping. Why? Where's the scientific reason for that? That's not the sign you should be posting. No smoking, vaping permitted. There's no side stream vapor emissions. The only time that you have emissions from a vaping product is when somebody breathes it in and then exhales it. So it's a subtractive science. You breathe this in, your body absorbs certain percentage of those aerosols, and then you exhale. So where's the secondhand smoke? There is no such thing. And it dissipates in five to 10 seconds as opposed to cigarette smoke, which lingers in the air for hours. And for those of you who don't know, this is a post on Twitter. Juka Kilavori posted this and it's a CBS International. Um, come on, mouse. News report. Sale of disposable vapes amid concerns about the rise in vaping among young people and non-smokers getting addicted. As of October 2023, 28 countries have banned the sale of any type of e-cigarettes. In addition, the UK, Germany, France, Ireland and Belgium are among the countries looking into how they can ban disposable or one-use vapes as they continue to grow in popularity. So what does the rise in vaping mean for the tobacco industry? And is the hysteria over their impacts well justified? The vaping industry has exploded over the last decade as health bodies have promoted it as an aid to quit smoking while cigarettes continue to fall out of fashion. 
In the UK, we have encouraged vaping among people who are struggling to stop smoking. And the use of e-cigarettes among those people has gone up over the years. Things like nicotine patches, gums, lozenges, and some drugs as well. You don't get that same hit as you would with uh, smoking a cigarette. Whereas with e-cigarettes, you do feel that nicotine hit. So it's a lot more similar to the experience of smoking. And as well as that, you get the more social experience of going out and doing it with someone and with interest comes innovation. The first known design of a vape was actually created almost 100 years ago in New York, but the technology wasn't... 1927. An invention yeah, before its everybody time. Said, every, everybody said that other guy invented it later on, but he didn't. It, that, that was the first ever, ever well, vape. Well, he was the one that invented something that could actually be manufactured, patented, sold, mm. and actually be put into the hands of the public back in 1927 yeah. the battery technology was nowhere near ready to be able to put into a handheld device to vaporize no. a liquid yeah. but it's just, it just so, sure the, the basic idea was already there you know what i mean he's just took it and improved it mate I, I kick myself in the ass how many times have i used a fog machine when i dj'd for weddings and events and parties and celebrations yeah. and filled the whole room with it and never once put two and two together and said, man, I could use the same liquid and make people quit smoking. Wow. Imagine where you would be now, sir, if you did. Made until much later, in 1963. Two designs. Honestly, I'd be in the same place I'm at now because everything that I made from it, I would reinvest in getting people to quit smoking. I, I value humanity's oh. improvement over oh. acquisition of wealth. Oh, with the current state with PMTs, you could be now bankrupt. <laughs> no, because even if it's not authorized for sale in the United States, I could still sell it in Europe and UK and the rest of the world where there aren't any regulations that prohibit it. It just means that my business model yeah. wouldn't be strictly United States oriented. preceded the vapes we know today. The first looked like a cigarette with a glowing light at the end, and the second was a much larger metallic device. Many of today's designs are much sleeker and look much more like a piece of tech than an aid to stop smoking. So this is actually one of our present day devices. The battery itself is a little bit bigger. Yes, it's a metallic, nice finished design. You get a screen on the front here to be able to tell people how much battery life is left. Because all these elements, if you're not a vapor, you'll sort of think that feels a little bit sophisticated. When you've made the transition across from cigarettes, battery life, you don't want to be out and suddenly find that your e-cigarette may fail on you. Because if you imagine when people have started on a single use product, it's a very simple device. You don't need to fill a product. You just take a sticker off, take a sticker off, you go, and then hopefully you dispose of it responsibly, not into household waste. Hoping to capitalise on this fast-growing industry, big tobacco companies waded into the market. British American Tobacco was the first to move into the space when it acquired startup CN Creative in 2012. Imperial then acquired e-cigarette brand Blue in 2014. Philip Morris... I never see those blue anymore, anywhere. I had a blue I tried the one time. Still a, but they're shit. They're still about over here, like. They are... <laughs> The disposables that you find nowadays for $15 in the store are at least 10 times better than blue ever was. Yeah. Morris bought UK e-cigarette company Nikko Sigs the same year and Japan Tobacco Incorporation bought e-lights in 2015. The old cigarette model in terms of volume declines was becoming much more pressured. There were increasing examples of countries outlining tobacco endgame policies within the next 10 to 20 years. There was increasing ESG overhang from investors and in how the investment community viewed cigarettes. And we started to see these products appear on. I want to go back and look at these things. Is this what your uh, packaging looks like in the UK? Or is it just Australia that oh, has yeah. this ridiculous okay. crap? No, but here, they've got pictures of lungs and dead corpses and everything on my cigarette packets now. Yeah. But, like, Definitely. I mean, don't these people realize that, okay, that might have made an impact when it was first released, maybe for the first year, maybe for some people, year two. But for anybody that's seen those for two years in a row, they no longer have any impact whatsoever. 
And if anything, you know yourself, when you were younger, you were a rebellious person. And if somebody said something was bad for you, you had to try it just to prove them wrong. Yeah. No, it's not going to make my, my eye look like that. My teeth aren't going to look like that. Doesn't matter whether it's true or not. That was like putting a challenge before a teenager going, <laughs> here you go. You want your eyes to look like this? Smoke yeah. this. Come on. You can do it. Yeah. Oh, just fuck right off. That's in how the investment community views. Yeah, it's going to backfire. People don't in tobacco control think, oh, we'll just raise the prices. We'll put all this you know, scary stuff on there. That'll get people to stop. No, it won't. Talk to any smoker and ask them, would that stop you from buying a pack of cigarettes? And everybody's going to say no. A few oddballs might say, oh, yeah, th that's all it takes to get me to quit smoking. Bullshit. No. The only way to get me and anybody else that is a diehard smoker to quit is to give them a better alternative. Something that tastes better, is more enjoyable, and is cheaper. Why do you think tobacco control is so adamant about raising prices on on vaping products? Because if they make them the same price as tobacco, guess what? We can treat them all the same, even though they're not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, swipes. <laughs> Huge cigarettes, and we started to see these products appear on the market from non-big tobacco and take share from cigarettes, so they were a competitive threat for the first time. The number of adults using e-cigarettes rose to 9.1% of the UK population in 2022, which is the highest ever, up from just 2.7% 10 years ago. Meanwhile, the number of smokers has dropped year on year and fell to 12.9% of the population in 2022. Jake Scrapwood says, I'm working on a mech to burrow. Unfortunately, his costs are almost 200 a pop. Wow. Holy shit. Take for granted, you know, how much materials cost could have gone up in this economy that we're living in. Mallory Gates says that those cigarette packs became good trading cards. They did, yeah. Hey man, you got the gangrene one? I'll trade you an eye popper for a gangrene. <laughs> the lowest since records began in 2011. And those figures are translating into big profits. British American Tobacco saw revenue from its vapor products increase by 40.3% in 2023 compared to 2022. So it's unsurprising that big tobacco is pivoting towards vaping. But the huge growth in the legal vape market is just one side of this story. In the last 10 years, illegal vapes have generated big sums of cash. The market is worth between three and four billion. You could estimate and intelligence would suggest that the illicit market could be as much as two thirds of that. So you've got a double issue. You've got unregulated product to a vast degree in the market and actually then youths accessing the product because those retailers prepared to stop those products and not doing the necessary age of verification. So a really big issue. And there are some key giveaways when it comes to spotting illegal products. The bigger puff device is certainly wider and certainly taller, normally quite square. So actually, if you see that as a consumer in a shop, anything over 600, you won't find any. Now, they want to cry the blues about the environmental hazards of disposables, right? It's so horrible. You morons made the rules yourselves. Two milliliter capacity limiting to 600 puffs means that everybody has to buy at least one of those every single day if they want to use that to not smoke combustible tobacco, right? Okay. Yep. So the industry says, listen, here's a product that's got 10,000 puffs, will last you the entire week and replaces anywhere from seven to 10 of these little compliant, legally required two mil capacity, 600 puff capacity disposable product. So now all of a sudden, the environmental problem of vaping is now automatically cut to 20% of what it was before. Problem solved. 
it's that 2ml rule we've got here. But that's what's down there. You worried about the environment? There's your solution. One product, you plug it in, recharge it, lasts you at least a week. For somebody like me that normally vapes through a modern tank and only uses that when you go out, this thing will still be operational for me come Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that in the UK that we would want rid of when the government actually do decide to sort out whatever they want to do. Get rid of the 2ML. Nobody sticks by it anyway. Nobody. Yeah, companies might sell them as 2ML, but they also just say, well, there, there's a bubble glass, there you go, 5ML. Nobody fucking takes any notice of it. Anyway, Listen, man, from the, my research that I've it. done and all the scientific papers I've read, you know why they did the 2 mil, 20 milligram capacity for TPD? Because there was a rumor floating around that nobody bothered to disprove that said 50 milligram nicotine would kill somebody if they ingested it. So if we limit it to two mils at 20 milligrams, the most that they could consume if somebody drank and ate a disposable or a vape would be 40 milligrams. So it wouldn't kill them. Hmm. But scientific studies have done since then show that the deadly level of nicotine would be way, way higher. I mean, look at the 50 milligram disposables we have here in the States. And some of these ones, you know, are 12,000, 15,000 puffs. I saw one the other day. 15,000 puffs. Wow. It's got to have like 25 milligrams of 50, 25 milliliters of 50 milligram solution in there. Easy. Oh, that's something we've always said using that, that needs to be sorted. Yeah. Got to get rid of the 2ML. Got to, it, it's just bullshit. Characters or flavor names that are associated with drinks or food because there's already legislation that should give you those warning signs. Flavor names that are drink or food. Well, how do you want the adults that are looking for a flavor they might like no guarantees. If you like blue raspberry cotton candy, there's no guarantee if you buy a blue raspberry cotton candy, you're going to like that blue raspberry cotton candy. Perfect example. Yeah. I did the review on this masking thing, and it was supposed to be a pineapple flavored thing, and I tasted it, and I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> what is this? I gave it to my wife, and she's like, this tastes like the one juice I brought a couple of weeks back at the grocery store and brought home to mix with my alcohol, mix with my vodka. Do you like it? No, but it does taste like an actual pineapple juice. I'm like, I think it's disgusting. I can't vape that. <laughs> She's like, I'll vape it, but it'll be the last one in my purse that I reach for. Yeah. Flavors are so subjective. That's like me vaping candy cane. Some people, I tell them I'm vaping candy cane. They're like, ew, that's disgusting. Why would you vape candy cane? Because I like it. Nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Not only. How about Steve? You remember when Steve was vaping mung bean? The oh, early vapes take a big slice of the vaping for God's industry, sake. but they're also pretty <laughs> users in serious danger. <laughs> we saw in the US. Hey, the late night vape show. I was doing a review. Some some juice company in Australia sent him some e-liquid. Guess what flavor they sent him? Musk. <laughs> musk. Go watch his video. He was vaping musk, and he th and he was like, "Oh, this is all right." Get to feck. <laughs> nah. Mick, seriously, mate. Musk, you like that it tastes like old lady perfume smells? He legit said in the video, he's like, it's a gorgeous smell. Okay. I'm glad you like it. Oh, make, 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 make. No, thank make, you. Make, 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 make. <laughs> String of deaths and hospitalizations, which seemingly were linked to vaping. And that caused 60 deaths and hundreds of hospitalizations with this lung issue, which they eventually called Ivali. What we found out eventually was that this 
illness was being caused by people who were trying to vape THC. And to do that, they were adding something called vitamin E acetate. And this vitamin E acetate is banned in the UK. In the UK, we've seen banned heavy metals in products that have been confiscated in schools. We've also heard reports of spice being added to vapes and children coming across these. So being exposed to drugs which they were not expecting to be exposing themselves to. So it's a very, very risky landscape at the moment for young people who are vaping. And as with most quick moving markets, regulations will always struggle to keep up with innovation. Big tobacco firms, including British American Tobacco for example, are selling heat sticks made from nicotine infused substances such as rooibos tea, which circumvent the EU ban of flavoured heated tobacco. The influx of all these flavours and these, these cheap disposable brands from China over the last few years, from a big tobacco perspective it's actually a positive because this will encourage regulators now to take action. I love how all these people say, oh, that's influx from China. Hey, mate, where were they made? Where are the legal products made? Where's British American Tobacco and Philip Morris International having their vape products made? What country? Please tell me. Well, you don't want to tell us that they're made okay. in China? Because that's where all of the products are made? Unless you get somebody like Jay Scrapwood that makes it in his own shop. It's common knowledge to the VM that everything pretty much comes out of Shenzhen. And where is Shenzhen? China! <laughs> yep. For the longest Hello. time, everybody took for granted that it came from Hong Kong. They're like, Hong Kong's not China. So no. it's okay. Well, that Hong, Hong Kong, Kong didn't make them. There was the international they shipping export. port for vaping products. Yeah. Until I'm they sure banned it. And then ship. six months later decided to reverse the ban because they lost so much money in shipping. Huh? It was in the trillions of dollars. Hong Meanwhile, Kong, Shenzhen Hong said, Kong be well, we'll just ship it right from Shenzhen. No problem. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> against these products is going to be a positive from a, a big tobacco perspective because it leads to that consolidation and also creates barriers to entry going forward so you won't see more and more products coming in from China. Meanwhile, smoke what? is still actively being in... What did he say? No product. Everything's made in fucking China, you clown. <laughs> more and more products coming in from China. You won't see more and more product coming in from China. Really? If you eliminated all the black market products and forced everybody to buy legitimate products made by the two big, big tobacco companies, where do you think those are coming from, asshole? China. <laughs> Meanwhile, smokers are still China. actively being really? encouraged to take up vaping to quit cigarettes. The British National Health Service, for example, says it poses a small fraction of the risk of smoking, which causes around 7 out of every 10 cases of lung cancer. But health professionals also highlight that vaping is not completely risk-free, and the longer-term risks are not yet known. We're fairly certain that vaping will be less harmful you in the long run than smoking will be, because it's got fewer harmful chemicals and toxicants in there. The issue is, if you're taking in those harmful ke chemicals and toxicants, and you wouldn't have been exposed... You wouldn't have been exposed to it if you just breathe air. Just breathe air! <laughs> really? All right. Let's take a look at it here. Where is it? Oh, damn. You refreshed the page while I wasn't looking. <sighs> I just saw a recent scientific study that was done. You know, we keep talking about how vaping is at least 95% less harmful than cigarette smoking, right? And there's been talk for years now. I heard Vic talk about it three years ago. That that number is supposed to change. It's supposed to go up. 96, 97, 98%, right? Yeah. We had Cancer Research UK say that the cancer risk of vaping... <laughs> is unlikely to exceed half a percent compared to cigarette smoking, right? Unlikely to exceed. Latest study 
took a look at the analysis of the vapor that's exhaled through vaping products like these disposables, for example. You know what the new study showed? Was the harm potential of that disposable vape? 0.25%. A quarter of a percent to harm from cigarette smoke. Is it exclusive to just that one product, just that one flavor that they tested? We don't know. That don't miss. But as time goes on and these mesh coils get better and better and like these new disposables have dual mesh technology in them, there's legit a double layer of dual mesh in there. There's an upper mesh and a lower mesh. And like, who is it? Um, what does Phil and um, Dimitri sell stuff for? What the... Uh, I'm going to brain fart. What brand they represent? Uh, Inakin. The... Inakin has a dual mesh where there's an outer mesh and then there's wicking and an inner mesh. And they can legit revitalize your mesh because of the dual layers in there. The one preheats the liquid and then the other one actually vaporizes it. Their coils last months long as opposed to weeks or days in again yes thanks guys um the technology keeps getting better and better so the percentage of possible oh, harm keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller but again you know the same long-term effects right well how long has vaping been out i've been vaping what four five six years people been vaping 10 years plus People have been vaping longer than 10 years. Any, has there been any known deaths because of vaping? No. No. Zero. No. So the long, the long term effects can't be that, you know, scary or bad if over 10 to 15 years there's been known, no known deaths just from vaping nicotine, not the shit. I'm waiting the for the one scientist that has the balls to say, Let's do a thought experiment. Let's compare when you're smoking a cigarette, how many decades does it take before you start seeing the health consequences of you choosing to smoke every single day, right? right. And now using some simple common sense logic and factual reasoning, realizing that vaping is a small, tiny fraction of that. I'm waiting for one scientist to have the balls to say, that the harm from vaping will never be realized within a person's lifetime if they never smoke a cigarette and only vape their entire life. Yeah. Meanwhile, 236,000 people a year die from water. Today's otherwise, yep. you're then increasing your harm. So we have cigarettes at the top is the most risky thing you can do. Then there's e-cigarettes underneath that. But the least or least harmful thing or the safest thing you can do is. Look how far her hands were apart. <laughs> let's be realistic and let's put it where it belongs. And there are some places in some towns where breathing air is actually more harmful than if you breathe every single breath of your life through a vape. Because the benefits of breathing in You're vegetable glycerin, a humectant, yeah. and propylene glycol, an antiviral, antibacterial substance, actually forces your lungs to clean crap out of it that it wouldn't do if it was just breathing air. Yeah. Fuck okay. me. Let's be realistic for a change, all right? as neither. Yes, we are seeing increasing youth prevalence, but I think you need to put that one in context of other vices or other categories like cannabis and, and alcohol. But at the same time, we're seeing increased youth usage. Youth cigarette smoking is lower than it's ever been, both in the US and in the UK, which would suggest that if these youth Good. were not using vape, which is much safer than cigarettes, they would otherwise be smoking. Holy cow, common sense. Holy shit. He said These kids are sense. smart enough to Hallelujah. pick something that's less harmful and was unlikely to hurt them. And here, Fuck here's me. some more facts for you. Dr. Colin Mendelson, despite him retiring this year, posted this. A study finds 
that the lung cancer risk from passing vaping, passive vaping, is 100,000 times less than passive smoking. How the hell do you even measure 100,000 times less? <laughs> what? <laughs> Toxins causing oh, lung cancer produced mainly by combustion and curling of tobacco leaf neither occurs in vaping. Well, no, because you eliminated everything except for the nicotine. And you're using VG, a humectant, and PG, an antimicrobial, and breathing that in. That stimulates your lung tissue to clean itself more than it would if it was just breathing in air. The but we're crazy. They don't state that most the nicotine is down to the end user. Like you see, a lot of shops sell end, you know, one shots or whatever with no nicotine in it. It's down to the end user who decides what the quantities or whatever they want to put in anyway. You know what I mean? There's no focus on that. They just think, oh, it's all nicotine, but nicotine. No, it's down to the And the, like you said, yes, you people taper the nicotine to what their body craves or desires, right? Yeah. So me, when well, I DIY my own stuff, I typically make it if I'm gonna put it in my tank, six milligram, right? But here I am doing reviews on a bunch of these disposables that are 50 milligram. And I take one or two puffs of this and I don't wanna vape for a good half hour. So when I do vape, because I get the desire to vape, not because of the nicotine, but because I crave that sensation and that pleasure of the flavor and the experience of breathing it in and seeing the exhaled plumes, we get something like what I got in, not a sponsor for this particular episode, Frusion Juice Company and the, t and the wonderful flavor that we tried last week. When they said, what, yeah. what do you want sent to you? I said, three milligrams. I want to enjoy your flavor, but I don't need the nicotine. I really don't. I want to enjoy your product for the flavor because that's what satisfies me and tickles my fancy. But again, with vaping, you've got a relatively good or a 100% idea of the amount of nicotine you're, you're taking. Cigarettes, you don't. You haven't got a fucking clue what's in them. There could be this in one cigarette, there could be this in another cigarette, because they're manufactured by the fucking millions. You don't know what's in them. Mm -hmm. What's the percentage of stems in this compared to the last one that you smoked? Exactly. You don't know. And the science already proves that the uptake of nicotine in your bloodstream is way faster in a combustible cigarette than it could ever be in a vape. I don't care how good the technology gets. Yeah. Oh, Your body doesn't well, yeah. metabolize it the same. Definitely. At least with vaping, you've got a more accurate measurement of what you're taking. And with alcohol, I keep filling up my bottle. <laughs> with alcohol, you just don't fucking care. <laughs> and the more you drink, the less you care. How much you've drank. Exactly. That's not the way with vaping. The more you vape, the more your body says, hey man, you've had too much. You need to slow it down. One's legal. One's increasingly becoming illegal. Why? In the UK, e-cigarette usage is highest among people aged between 16 and 24, while one in nine children had experimented with vaping in March 2023, which is up from one in 13 in the same month in 2020. Why aren't they celebrating that? Yay, they're not lighting cigarettes anymore. No more Dories for these guys. No more fags. No more Marlboros. They're choosing to vape, and it's not going to kill them. So as a fast-growing industry, both legally and on the black market, it looks like vaping is here to stay. I think we've got to around the level at, at which it will be at uh, its most popular, but how long it takes for it to decrease in popularity again is 
yeah, yet to be seen. And it's difficult to really think about how long a fad can last <laughs> until they become less trendy. It's going to be a really, really uphill drive for us to try and reduce the youth use without having a reduce in the trend. <laughs> if you look at the growth curve over the last two years, there has been that demonstrable increase. That is great because in many ways, people weren't sure what it was about. What are these products? Are they the solution or are they the issue? Well, actually, hopefully it's been proven now. Listen, we talk about this all the time, right? There are reasons why people start doing things and start using substances in their life, right? Yep. Most of the time, Coping. it's because you perceive your life as being really shitty. So you're looking for an out. You're looking for something to make you feel better. You're looking for a way to cope with the realities of your life and your perceptions of those realities. Or you're looking for a simple solution like I was in the middle of the night when I drank all the coffee I could drink, I was going to float out the door, but I was still falling asleep in the middle of my shift. I reached for a cigarette because it's something I haven't tried yet. And guess what? It works way better than caffeine. And when you pair it with caffeine, they both work better. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Imagine if I could have reached for a vape back then instead of a cigarette. Would I be having the same symptoms and health conditions that I have now? After researching all the science, the answer I, in my opinion, is no. I wouldn't have circulatory problems in my legs. What a crock. Yeah. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> sure is. <laughs> but again, at the end of the day, as ex smokers, you know, we'll come to a point where says, well, you know, we need to do something about this, and, and we have. Yep. And now we're here, we are here today, hopefully living, you know. A better healthier lifestyle you know we're not ex we're not expecting to begin keep fit fanatics and hit the gym 20 times a week and go and do backflips everywhere so it's just you know what just general health you know what i mean it's just mate i need to start hitting the, hitting the gym <laughs> i'll let myself go since covid it just keeps getting worse and worse hey, man. i literally eat one meal a day most days today is an exception because the wife is home so she made me a bagel with egg and cheese on it this morning as a sandwich to get my day started. But normally, you know, one meal a day is all I eat. The problem is I don't exercise enough. I don't move enough. I'm in this office, you know, trying to come up with ideas for new videos and new topics and editing ones I've already got and recorded and do computer work to try and make some money and work on websites and all this other stuff. It's all at a desk. I need more mobility in my life to increase my calorie consumption to offset even just one meal a day. Oh, I see where you come from. It's, it's, it's not just about sitting, not eating, you know, it's, it's just got the balance in it. Yeah. So somebody asked me the other day, you know, well, why do they call it Boxing Day? And I, I was trying to be a smart ass when I come up with this answer. You know, you know why it's called Boxing Day? It's the day after Christmas, so this is the day that they box up all the Christmas shit and put it away for next year and bring out all the fucking Easter stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I'll start selling holidays because the adverts for holidays now are just fucking rampant. So here's Christmas over, holiday advert. Bang! Straight in your face. My wife walked in the store the other day trying to find one last Christmas thing that she wanted. They already had fucking Valentine's Day shit on the shelves at the dollar store. No way. Oh, damn. That's mad. That is fucking mad. Everything's commercial now. There's no meaning to any celebrations anymore. It's all about money making. So no. Is that all commercialized? And we take it for granted, you know, people talk about Christmas, you know, they lost Christ in Christmas. 
And I understand, you know, there's a movement against, you know, mass religion and, you know, universally adopted singular religion, especially, in, you know, since 9-11 with the Muslims and trying to give everybody their free equity in society. But nobody ever talks about the commercialization of every single holiday. Doesn't matter what holiday you pick. That's not even about Christmas, it's about religion. Look at any holiday, even like 4th of July, and how commercialized it has become. Mm -hmm. Christmas, dude. We know Christmas, family time, all that shit. Yeah. Christmas Day, there was shops open here in the U. There was actual shops open on Christmas Day. Yeah. Okay. That never used to happen 20 years ago. Everything was shut, period. Yep. It's what you used to call your factory fortnight. Everything shut for two weeks. Christmas used to be a ghost town. No fuck would be out. It'd be a ghost town. Now you fuck it's just like a normal day. Cars all over, shops open, you're like, eh? Really? Nothing says like the spirit of Christmas. Like fighting over a parking spot to go and pick something up for a Boxing Day special. Oh, yeah. I think if anything, it shows how, how much selfish people have become nowadays. Like you see, fighting over a car park. Fuck off, man. I mean... Very selfish. Very true. Mm. I think that's what COVID did as well. I think it brought everybody out all all for themselves. Fucking COVID, fuck you. You can go fucking die. I'm looking after number one. Fucking number one. Fuck you. And it's still and it's still and it's stuck. Yeah. It's still the same. People's attitudes have changed badly. Trump did it here. Oh, God. The politics of Trump and him fighting for the rights of people to be selfish, to let yourself be selfish, has completely changed. Like even driving in the city, people cut you off and never blink an eye anymore. Well, yeah. You know, I can remember a decade ago that Pittsburgh was one of the one of the safest cities to drive in, most friendly city to drive in, or some ridiculous thing like that. Not anymore. That's it. You're sitting, you know, you used to sit at the junction waiting to pull out. Busy, somebody used to always go, come on, get yourself out. Not fucking now. You can fucking wait. I'm in a hurry. Boom. That's the problem. Everybody's in a fucking rush to get from A to B. All in a rush. Rat race. Yep. Get out of my way. I've got to be here. Get out of my way. Nobody stop me. I have got to get here. Regardless. Fuck everybody else. That's what it is. Ooh. Very nice, Mr. Sean Lynch. So let's ask that question since Sean already answered it. What is everybody vaping on today? Yeah, well. Um I'm on I'm, I'm on this looks XR Max. I think they've just brought a new one of these out. That's just it's a new XR Pro or something. They broke a new one of these out, the looks ones. I'm on this. I've got butterscotch popcorn in that one. Um, on this one, which is the I'm still on the I'm still on the Falcon. We didn't release that. I'm still on this Falcon. <laughs> right. Those I'm are good coils. And, I, and I've got um, some messy juice custard donut in that. But I, I'm loving this. I, I, it's just totally revitalized my, my. I don't know, the old school shit. I mean, that is fantastic. Stock coils are popular for the reason of its simplicity. You pop the coil in, you vape it until it's bad, then you swap the coil out. No fanning but about. The flavor of this thing, the flavor for the age of it, the flavor of this thing is as good as anything I've tasted the day. It's still banging. It's never died with the age. It's still there. Um, so I'm still loving this, and obviously I've got the, uh, the big man out here, and at the moment I've got some of uh, 
Honky Vapes Gingerbread. And this fella. This, oh, oh. I emailed Darren. I'm like, mate, could you give me the recipe and secret for your gingerbread? I ran out of the one shot last year. I'd like to mix up a little bottle for Christmas this year. He was like, yeah, sure. And then all I heard was church mice. <laughs> Yeah, man. That says it all, sir. Yeah. So I've got inside of my lovely Blaze Solo that candy cane one shot that we mixed up. That's in my all day vape all week. You can see we made this last week and it's just about gone. I've been plowing through that. Sitting on my desk, I still have this lovely Fusion Juice Company we had last week in here. I love the flavor in this. It's fantastic. If anything, I think the flavor is too potent and too strong, if that's a really? thing. Mm. The flavors are fantastic. The clementines, then the citrus, the mango. It's just... Ooh, all front, forefront, and it is sweet enough to be recognized as an actual fruit. So it's but it's just like... Here. My mouth is still salivating from the vape I just had. I why it's almost too good, <laughs> if that's a thing. Can it be too good? Can it be too good to be true as they say? So I'm grateful for the ability to do these ones. I did the candy cane in here. Got that lovely one. And this grape tastes like a grape bubble gum without bubble gum flavor. It's just that luscious, punchy grape flavor in it to it. With a hint of strawberry on the back end. Delicious, beautiful flavor. And what else? I got all my miscellaneous assortment of all these other tanks laying around. However, I did have to <laughs> change always. the blaze. I took it off the Jackaroo, the single 21700 mod, and I had to put it on this Wismec. Despite it being 45 watts, I got tired of having to change the battery in this three quarters of the way through my day. So now I got dual batteries. Uh, I swap them out once a day. I'm much happier. You're a happy bunny. That's last near the time. Yeah, and if I forget, it still gets me through the whole night, and I don't have to worry about it till mid morning. Having dual 21700s in there. So we're doing good. Then we got Sean Lynch says that he's vaping on grape soda on his Watofo RDA recurve dual mounted on top of a Geek Vape T200 at 45 watts. 45 watts, oh dear. That's a bit lame. Mallory Gates has her Dove Po MVV2 topped with a dead rabbit OG and has her own butter pecan pie and hippie vapes blue falcon. That's something I didn't mix up recently. <laughs> oh, bless you, sir. I like her um, butter pecan recipe. It's so simple. Butter pecan and pie crust just, you know, and sweetener. That's it. Delicious. Sean, Sean Lynch. Sean Lynch, 45 watts. Sean. 150 fucking watts, my friends. <laughs> On the tight. And holy fucking moly. <laughs> I bet your wife loves Just that. Because Oh, the window was wide open. I'm, that's why I'm freezing. That window was wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Pam Spragans is on her Smock Nord 5 using frozen fruit monster mango peach guava ice. Very nice. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Without the ice. It'd be very nice without the ice, as we say. That, that Listen, ice. I'm telling you, when you get so much flavor in here... Sometimes it's nice to have the ice in there just to bring the edge down on the sweetness and all the fruity flavors. I do, like I say, with some of the, the disposables you get, Thank you. there is a nice quantity. There is a nice quantity of it in, but the ones that's too much, oh no, no. Sean, don't listen to him. 
You vape whatever you like. <laughs> if you like it at 45 watts, it's warm enough for you. It produces enough vape for you. Then don't worry about it. You don't have to crank it up to 65 if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, true. It's true what he says. If you're happy with that, stick with that. You know, I mean, I'm on a, you know, a beast of a device so I, with a build in that. Dude, don't trust it. It's not as hot as you think it is. It's the build kind of blends it down a bit. You know what I mean? Wait a minute. Like, let's rewind that again. What did you just say to him? <laughs> you don't have to do that. There you go. <laughs> Truth comes out in the end. I hope it's bad. There's the halo. There's the halo. <laughs> no, no. Amazing. Vape it what you're comfortable with. That's all I say. I'm comfortable with this at the moment because I've got the build to do it. But there you go. No shaming anybody out there vaping. Listen, as long as you're vaping instead of smoking a cigarette, I don't care if you're on a disposable. I don't care if you're on a mech mod. I don't care if you're on a stock tank. I don't care if you're on a mount to lung, a direct to lung. As long as you're not smoking the deadly That's cigarettes, the you're winning. I mean, I'm, I'm passing through lots of devices. I mean, where the fuck have I just put that? I've, like I said, I've got my little XR dual thing going. I've got a big, massive, fucking 150 watt thing going. I've got an 80 watt fucking, you know, I've got very, lots of variations, you know. Brilliant, man. Vaping is better than smoking. Yeah, yeah. But as the other bloke said, yeah, yeah. So cheerio. <laughs> Mm -mm. God, man. every device is just nice when you get it right. It just doesn't matter what you are, like you say. Everything's nice. Listen, I think back to myself, you know, when I first quit smoking and I was dying to find a vapor product that would work for me, how much of a struggle it was and how much I felt like I really got to shop around. I got to watch all these YouTube videos. I got to figure out what is the best device out there. And to realize here I am four years later and I could use any device and I'm quite happy with it. Well, it's the same, I mean, myself, I mean, you know, I, I wasn't against disposables, but I wasn't a fan of them. But then again, I never tried them, so I couldn't judge them. I couldn't like judge them or be it, you know, an accurate judge of them. I was just sitting there with everybody else on the high horse on the fence because they're the hobbyists and they like building coils and fucking disposable the bad. But get off the fence, try them, and honestly, you'd be blown away by them. There's a reason Maybe. I do disposable videos. Nobody watches them. Look at the reviews on my disposables. 70 views, 90 views. But if it helps yeah. one person try it and stop and pick one up, and go, wow, this is actually better than my cigarettes. And gets them into the vaping hobby field. <laughs> I've saved their life. I feel yeah. accomplished for doing that. I don't need 70,000 views on a video. There is a place for them. They're not just for people who want to quit. The people who who can't vape hobby stuff. They can't build coils. They can't change coils. They can't do this for whatever reason. They might, you know, they might have arthritis in the fingers where they can't do anything. They use disposables. There's a, there's, there's a place out there for them. Unfortunately, like everything else, they're being abused by what they say, the younger generation, which, you know, a lot of people would beg to differ. You know, it just depends on which side of the fence you are on that one. But there's a place for them. It's, it, there's no getting away from it. I've used them many a time, like my batteries, you know, I've been out on the road and I thought, oh shit, my batteries have died. I've had to actually go to the shop and buy a disposable to get us for the rest of my day. And it Perfect worked. example. I just put a fresh 21700 in here because the battery died, so I threw it into the charger. I didn't want to break up another yeah. set for a single battery device. So here, mm -hmm. this is the first time I picked it up from last week's show. And this watermelon that's in this apple, this baby apple flavor, yeah. Sweet apple sugar baby. 
That watermelon sits forefront and in the background and gives you such a juicy, delicious flavor. Perfect. I love this in the Arbiter. Delicious oh, juiciness. That was the only disappointment with that package. I've had to wait longer to get my hands on that fucking Arbiter. <laughs> I really want to get my hands on that fella. Fuck, I'll tell you what it is. When I get it, I'll do a live build on the show. There you go. How is that going? Nice. We'll do a live build. I'll do a live build on the show. And I'll sit there awesome. and I'll do it live. I'll do it live. See what we think about it. You'll probably prove me wrong, as you always do, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, everybody has their favorites and then they have certain things that they like about RTAs and certain things about RTAs that are annoyed by them. Like Mike Vapes likes his stuff restricted. And for him to put out this blaze and have as much airflow as I totally love to have, uh, that was a glorious moment for me. Yeah. But there's people that can't stand a lot of airflow. I tend, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm restricted, restricted where it's tight. I, I do like the little bit tight, but I don't be too tight. You know what I mean? But I still like to be able to get a good draw without overheating or burning the fucking juice out. You know what I mean? This I still like a nice inhale. I mean, oh, yeah. Like I say, I mean, that one there, I mean, you know, there's the Titan. I'm vaping that fully open and I'm loving it. You know, it's, it's spot on, but like with the same with this one, I've got you know, this guy here. You've seen the you know, the horizon, the little size of the fucking air holes. On that there mass. was I've massive got, airflow on the horizon fully. last time I remember it. The Falcon, I've got I've got that fully open as well. That's the Falcon King, and then, then I go to this, which is fully open but much tighter, and I'm still happy with the, with the pull I got off it. Yeah. Still does what I want. I think I tend to go with the tight airflow for, for a flavor I like because I think a tight airflow does enhance the flavor a bit. I, I get that. But if I just want to chuff away, I'll quite happily be it or fully open or half open or whatever, you know. It's, it, it, it depends, like I say, it's what you're used to, you know, and what you what you do, and you, and you do make allowances for whatever you get, and like I say, a disposable, you know, it's, it's small mouth to lung, tight draw and all that, but you make allowances and you get used to it and you, and you deal with it, you know, it's just like everything, you know what I mean? I love the but flavor that I like, get out of the Arbiter, it's always been my winner for flavor. But as hobbyists, and say, you say reviewers as such, even though it's a dying game you've got to be open to all these different things and give them a go and go in with an open mind and open eyes and you know if you'd like you like just like the go. fda talks about the continuum of risk using tobacco products right you've got vaping on one end which is right next to air breathing clean air and then you've got cigarette smoke on the other end there are literally thousands upon thousands of products all along that scale along that continuum of risk and vaping is just one 5% segment of that entire continuum. But that 5% is broken into thousands of segments and thousands of products. That's why I love pulling stuff out from like, you know, 2016 or 2020 and comparing it with what's out today. There was some stuff that came out that was unbelievable. I can't understand how it didn't get to be number one on the scene. For it to come out that long ago and produce the flavor and the airflow that you want, not overheat, and your coils lasted forever. But have you noticed over the years, like vaping, what I say, habits, habits devices kind of rotated, like, especially with releases, like one year you get loads of RTAs, boom, 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 then, then it would change to R. Years, you know, you start used to rotate all the time, different products all the time, and then obviously disposables came along and kind of did kind of fuck it up a bit, like, but you know what I mean. But there was always that kind of rotation, wasn't there? It was a nice, the best RT, and then next thing now there's an RDA, you know what I mean? It, it always rotated around, type of thing. 
Honestly, I think the reason why the production life cycle has slowed down for a lot of these things, and like even Vic made a comment on his latest video about how when the companies release something, it used to be they would release it, and then like two months later, you'd be shit out of luck and you couldn't find any parts for it or anything. Like my wife right now is disheartened by the fact her Max Pod by Freemax, it's only available in maybe three or four shops now the rest of them are all out of stock out of inventory and they're not going to replace them it's done it's run its course and she's heartbroken because she loves the thing if she could buy a thousand of them she'd be set for the rest of her life but funny you could say that because like i was in a little me local by i say local it was just a local convenience store at night and i think the panic is starting to set in with the ban on disposable because they had what was it? Five? Five elk balls in a pack for 15 quid. Yeah. They sound them bulk. They sound them bulk now to get rid. And if you take a look at the vaping industry as a whole, the reason why the production life cycle slowed is because of the threat of legislation all around the globe. You know, UK is talking about banning disposables. Australia's talked about it, you know. Even even New Zealand has clamped down on it, was going to have everything legislated so one town had one vape shop. That's it. Everybody in the town had to go to the one single vape shop to get all their stuff. And there was only going to be so many things that were going to be allowed. So why are you going to invest a million dollars to come out with the latest RTA and take the chance of manufacturing, let's say, 5,000 of them and then not have a place on the planet to sell it? Exactly. So they can't have five of these in the pipeline in development. Let's cut it back to one. And when we put it out there, let's put all of our eggs in the basket and get everybody to do everything we can to get as many of these sold and keep it on the market as long as possible. But then you've hit on something there because imagine all the devices that they probably have developed that are just sat in the back boiler now. Yeah. There must be loads that just be sitting there on the back burner. Will they release them? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on how because sales go with the stuff they've already got on the pipeline. Yeah. If you think about legislation is killing legislation, it's shooting itself in the foot. Because obviously, you know, they're coming out with this ban, that ban, that ban. All the manufacturers are thinking, well, what the fuck do we do here? You know, we don't know whether we can sell it this country, we don't know if we can sell it that country, we don't know if we can do anything in this country. Well, it's like you said, we'll just fucking reel it in a bit and see what happens. And the legislation is also the shooting the industry in the foot because, like, Canada has yeah. their own requirements for child safety of rebuildable products. You have to protect the device so that only an adult, it's like opening an aspirin bottle. You have to have the special top on there and you got to be able to open it, but a kid can't just grab it and open it. Yeah, I get that. Exactly. And that you can only sell those in Canada because nobody in the United States wants to fanny about trying to get the cap off of a fucking rebuildable. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <enough. coughs> you can understand the child safety thing, obviously, but anybody with any common sense will keep the vape gear away from the fucking children anyway. You know what I mean? It's not for fucking toddlers. You know what I mean? It's simple as that. Yeah. You wouldn't put a bottle of you wouldn't put a bottle of bleach in the middle of your kitchen floor and let your kid fucking run around with it, would you? So it's the same thing with your vape shit. You know what I mean? You just wouldn't do it if common sense prevails. You know what I mean? You remember the Tide Pod challenge that was going around on TikTok? <laughs> fucking the, all these teenagers are putting oh, this fucking you know dissolvable Tide laundry soap in their mouth as a contest. Tide got a oh. bunch of shit over it, so now they have child caps on the Tide Pods. Did you buy this big jug with the Tide Pods in it? And now you've got an adult um, inhibiting cap, so your grandma can't open a fucking laundry soap anymore to protect some snot-nosed kid that was doing a TikTok challenge. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like that with them. God, there's two like, God, I can't remember what the call them. No, I've never seen them, but there's two like you UK pranksters they've done pranks on each other and I think they've got a vote the one of them vaped and somebody fucked about with the Watofo device 
and that's when all the fucking shit came out about with Tofu over here. Was he, used, he fucked about with his device? He done something or done something to it, and fucking with Tofu were quite fucking happy to go along with it. That's why everybody fucking boycotted the fuckers, you know, for giving it to these pranksters because they made it look cool to fuck about with a fucking vape device. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and there was now everybody boycotted. I mean, Vic, everybody just fuck with Tofu. I'm not fucking reviewing your shit no more and everything because of, why I don't know if the thought was some kind of cool marketing idea but why they give it these two pranksters whether they knew the script or not is debatable but you know they abused the device when this came out there was a lot of flack from the industry about this device the Wismic Active because it's got a Bluetooth speaker in it, and they're like, oh, that's for the kids. That's all attracting the kids because parents don't use Bluetooth devices, Bluetooth speaker vapes. That's for the kids. I will do. We they do. got so much shit over it. And I'm like, no, I think that's pretty freaking cool. I'd love to have this when I go camping. Be sitting there at the picnic table getting ready for dinner. You know, wife's cooking on the grill, and I got my vape, and I got my Bluetooth speaker playing off of the, my phone. But... We were all scared you know what of what like the legislation might lash back because it was attracting kids. Do you, know, do you know what I would like on one of these, right? If anybody could ever do it, right? I know it might be fucking shit anybody else, but I'd like a clock. You know, a digital clock. That one, that one there, the clock on the, you know what I mean? A separate, separate. I know you got some with time on them, and, the, and when they're done, they stand by, they've got the clock. But I would like a separate screen with a separate clock on the other side. I think that would be so cool. I know the it would be more. Yeah, I know it'd be more boards and more fucking shit. But you know, just if you could just turn it round, guy. Now that's the time, fucking time, sort of squinting at your fucking board. I think that would be so handy. And the alarm clock, even set an alarm on it, you know what I mean? Beep, 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 beep. Wake up in the fucking morning and then go, hello, babe. Thank you. Where do you go? Yeah, but I was thinking there's a separate screen. You know what I mean? That's the Sigeli Shikra. When you have it turned yeah. off, it's an alarm clock. Yeah, that's it. That'd be, that's so cool. That's so cool. No, what would be really cool is if you could program it to automatically notify you it's time for your smoke break. You better. F well, you just set an alarm, wouldn't you? Technically, you know what I mean? <laughs> we can have the alarm scene. Every smoke 30 break. minutes from, you know, 6 a.m. until 10 p.m., it goes off. Yeah. Tells you it's time for your vape break. Yeah. yeah. Because vape then, yeah, not small break, vape. Because then, you could change it so that after a couple months, you could change it to every thirty-one minutes. It'll do the same thing, and have it automatically every week add a minute to it. And you could eventually quit yeah. vaping if that's what you really wanted to do. Yeah, just make it longer, 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 and so you to go out longer. Enough. That's a good idea. You know, funny. <laughs> I was watching that again, you know. That Michael Bridges is a Scottish comedian. And I think I mentioned before, he hit the nail on the head. You know, you were in the pub and I... And bag break. He says, now we're vaping it. <laughs> I think this is a, the amount of men that go out that door. <laughs> <laughs> what a genius I think it's just pure genius capitalising upon the vape scene I think it's just you know, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I never did it like that I was just like hey man <laughs> I didn't I didn't think I've ever done it I think I've I've just thought I've just turned I'm going for a vape I've, I've never said you're coming up just as I am going for a vape. Listen, mate, when we went out to, to Dave and Buster's, I had to joke around because, you know, I, I was like, uh, got done eating. And uh, I got up, grabbed my vape, and was getting ready to walk. And they're like, hey, man, where are you headed off to? I'm like, I'm doing my patriotic duty and taking my breathing treatment. 
<laughs> patriotic. I'm like, what? <laughs> patriotic? How is that patriotic? Because I'm going to collect myself to security, you bastards. I'm not going <laughs> to die an early death from cigarette smoking. Exactly. I'm going to get my pension, you motherfucker. <laughs> Damn what straight, I've Skippy. I've into all my work and life. I'm going to get it back. Trust us. Fucking here, man. Too right. Yeah, is that and all. Got to live long enough to cut your pension. Come on. You know what I mean? You paid into it all your life. Reap the rewards. Don't kill yourself all it. You know what I mean? Fuck that. Yep, that'll be my I'm new new, new budget for the studio. 50% of my pen, 50% of that's going to go into new stuff. I can't wait. I'm going to get a drone. I'm going to get new cameras, some GoPros. So I can, oh man, I've already got all kinds of plans and scripts already started. And Don't wish your life away, man. Tell me, don't wish it away. I've got a drone, but the fucking battery life on a shit. 15 minutes flight time. By the time you get the fucker up, it's time to bring it down. Shite. I want to know how all these people do these drones and they've got hours and hours of footage. I don't know how many batteries you're carrying. You must have a backpack full of batteries because they don't last shit. Well, it's just like Back. microphones, man. Microphones, cameras. You can buy yourself a $50 microphone and make do with it. But you get yourself a $500 microphone and compare it side by side, it's night and day. You didn't even realize how shitty you sounded until you actually record yourself on something good. No, but I've, I've had, I've tried loads of drones and the average drone flight time is 50 minutes, 20 minutes tops. And that's on your top of the range. Christmas Which, holiday, we were watching a football game, right? My wife's a big Dallas Cowboys fan, right? And it was funny watching the drone that they have flying around the stadium and that thing flies the whole game exactly how <laughs> well they probably paid five grand for that drone not including the camera that hangs underneath it on the gimbal but they put a good battery in there that has the energy density needed to keep the thing up in the air the whole game maybe they changed the battery half time that's so sick because they you know, these Amazon are, are trying drones. We're going to see where you, 20 minutes flight time. You're going to be quick. <laughs> you better damn well believe the military has drones that will last for hours, not minutes. Of course they have. Of course they have. I mean, like, the equivalent would be like your, your petrol engine, model plane, you know, your model aircraft. They're all run off petrol engines and... I'd say, I suggest you would get a bit more better flight time than the fucking drone out of them, like, but, you know, obviously mm -hmm. a small engine, small fuel tank. No, that's the one thing that the um, energy efficiency of the electric motor far surpasses combustion, the internal combustion motor. Mm. Because the electric um, motor can be throttled instantaneously. That's how it can keep its balance and all that other stuff, even when it's wind. Oh, you yeah. know, you get a breeze yeah. come through and it can keep completely stabilized. Whereas the internal combustion engine, there's a reaction time difference. I've got you on that side, pinch side, yeah. But seeing that when you talk about wind with some drones, I've lost quite a few to wind. <laughs> In the tree, gone. What the fuck happened there? <laughs> mm -hmm. That thank your lovely regulations you know for limiting your ceiling height so you can fly the drone in. I mean, you know, it's not a pretty sight watching a 50 odd year old man clambering up a stinky rotten tree trying to get <laughs> the fucking drone. <laughs> hey, everybody's got to have their hobbies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Branches snapping on the immense weight and shit. <laughs> I bet that makes you regret putting your guitar in the closet. Yeah, true. Your guitar never made you climb a tree <laughs> after it. String oh. breaks, you just put a new one on. <laughs> Throw it up, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Christ almighty. Listen, mate, we're running out of alcohol. Yeah. 
We haven't even done our retro vape or a random recipe mixing. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. I've got a fridge full, mate. <laughs> I do too, but I don't like mixing it up. It's Christmas, mate. You've got to, you know, make exceptions for the time of year. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's you remember when we were younger, we used to go to the pub and you'd have like 10 different things to drink that night. Somebody would buy yeah, you a trash man. can. Somebody would buy you a Long Island iced tea. Somebody would buy you a pint. Somebody would buy you a shot. Then somebody else down the other yeah. end of the bar buys you a shot of something else. Yeah, them were the days. <laughs> Then were the days. The Christmas day, we, we, I mean, we I remember years we used to go on Christmas day with your Christmas jumper on in the pub, you know, and everybody would get, ha, 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 idiot, you know. That was part of the fun, you know what I mean? It was brilliant. Them days are gone. Ah, people don't do it anymore. Just so sad. It used to be fucking brilliant. We used to, we used to have competitions who could come in with the cheesiest jumper on or the shittiest jumper you know what I mean just fucking ridicule them you know brilliant man days are gone now man yeah. awesomely gone you just say to your wife I'll be back by three for me dinner you never were were you you missed your dinner <laughs> no. <laughs> no it never happened you roll in at 11 o'clock at night in the bad books and that was it the thing that always got me was, is you know, we were DJing there until close. Everybody had to be out of the building by 3.30. And if you were doing a gig that was only there that night, you had to pack everything up. So you were out of there by four. You didn't go straight home and go to bed. You went and found an all night diner like Denny's and you sat there and had yourself, you know, a dinner or breakfast or whatever, and some even some appetizers. Shoot the breeze for another hour or so before you finally wind down enough to go to home and even think about going to bed. That's how my night, that's how when I used to work night shift, right? I never used to go to bed straight away. I used to go to bed. See, we used to do like six or six night shift. Finish 6 a.m., get home for about 6.30. Then I'd watch TV or whatever, do me catch up on emails till about 10. And people used to say, well, why don't you go to, go to bed? I said, well, that comparison, that's my evening time. It's just like when you finish at five, You'll have your certain hours of evening. That's my evening time, if you comparison. Yeah, you it takes four, five, six hours to wind down from your day. Yeah. Yeah. And there was plenty of times I came home 6, 30, 7 o'clock in the morning after yeah. DJing the night You're before. Like, uh -huh. And people couldn't get their heads around. Well, I'm straight to bed, me. I went, well, yeah, if you can go straight to sleep, that's brilliant. I would love to do that, but I said, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just catch no. up on the day's events and the news. Yes, Especially nice. considering yeah. nowadays we were doing nothing but cherry bombs and Jaeger bombs, and oh, yeah, it was man. easier when it was just oh, let's drink a pitcher of beer, you know what I mean, or a bucket of beer. It was all downers. Then they started bringing Jaeger bombs into the situation, and you sat there and drinking all those Red Bull all night long on top of your alcohol. Half the time you walk out of the club, you don't even feel like you've even had a drop to drink because you got so much upper and downers, and they're fighting in your body. You're just bouncing on you. You're just, Wah, hey, I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, part of your body's being drug across the street. The other one's bouncing you across the street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I bounced up the street many nights. Boing, boing, boing. Oh, many a car. <laughs> doing, doing. <laughs> there was one night I was walking home. I'd been out for a, a good old drink. And I was, honestly, I was boinging off the wall, boinging off cars. And my wife was at the door waiting. There was no one. Hey, darling. I walked through the fucking past Oh, my goodness. <laughs> at least you didn't go in the wrong house. I would, I would have if I kept going. <laughs> I had a couple mates of mine do that. Go into the wrong house, lay in the wrong bed. Holy shit, that's dangerous territory. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, mate. Next time, don't drink so much. <laughs> the hobby just walks in. You just crossed the bed with these misses. Oh, shit. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> yeah. 
But you know, there were days of fun and laughter then, man. Them were the days. They sure were. What do we got in chat? What have we missed out on? Oh, I see. That's why you make kids to make grandkids. Oh, yes, fair enough. <laughs> Sean Lynch likes the tattoo. Oh, don't get me started on that. I feel bad oh, I didn't get the wife a tattoo gift tattoo certificate tattoo. for another tattoo. However, she did take my daughter to get her first tattoo. They both got little matching snowmen, little twenty dollar tattoos. My, my daughter got a tattoo kit for Christmas. Yes, they've been practicing. They've been putting a little black and white love hearts. They've been putting a smiley face on the bottom of that big toe. Two dots and a little smiley face on the bottom of the big toe. Cried <laughs> out. I said, you realize that's never going to come off? Don't care. It's a big toe. But I, I give her due, she's a fantastic drawer. Um, it's something she would like to do. So, yeah, good luck with that. That is a gift I've never been blessed with. If you need oh, me to make oh, you a oh. set of blueprints to build anything, I don't care if it's a piece of furniture or a picnic table or a shed out back, I can get the you know rulers and stuff out and I can draw you a beautiful blueprint to go build it. But to draw freehand, I never had that skill. Oh, she's fantastic. I, I was pretty good in my day. I just, I just think it's just something that I've just moved on to someone else. But she's fun. Oh, some of our artwork she produces fun. The thing is, she's got to be motivated. She's got to stick in. She, she gets bored easy and she drifts off. But once she gets into it, by God, she can produce some good stuff. Like, it's really good draw. Yeah, my wife draws it. Well, both her and her brother. Yeah, it's fantastic, man. She's a brilliant draw. They can draw anything. She's the same. I mean, this is the kind of stuff. <laughs> this is what they were doing. They were like, they were, they were doing little love hearts and half moons and shit, you know. Just <laughs> <laughs> little you know what I mean? Just, just to try the. They were just doing that to try the gun out. You know what I mean? To see if they could do it and all that stuff. And you're like. Space hey. Turtle One, hello and welcome. Ah, yes, Spacey, my friend. How are you doing? But yeah, that she's got a tattoo gun now, so I'm sleeping with one eye open now in case I've got a fucking a cock and balls tattooed on my chest one morning or something. <laughs> I'm saying. I bet Hunky can draw a gun. Yep, just not using a pencil. That's not the lead I use. These middle names. <laughs> These middle names, Carl. They call him Alex Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I've just watched, right? And it's a classic. Now, I wonder if you've seen it. It was, what was it? When the West Was Won with Charles Bronson in it. What a movie. I forgot how good that was. Brilliant, brilliant old school film. Cowboy, obviously. You know. But he's got the the, the mouth there, uh, organ. That. That is an absolute epic What? What the movie, man. Brilliant, brilliant movie. It's all about getting your revenge, mate. I can't tell you the last time I actually saw that. I love those 60s westerns. Notice John Wayne's, this, all of John like, Wayne's classics were done in the 60s, I mean, I late like, 60s. I like the cinematography. I just like the cinematography. I like the way they've done it with the film. Like that, the, them kind of movies, the, the cinematography on was Brilliant, man. You know, the what fascinated me was the sound score when they got yeah, and they man. think of the budget that they had to have to have an orchestra sit, have somebody compose the music yeah. for it, have the orchestra play it, and then to have that audio blended and put into the actual movie. Classics, but I, I just like that area, era of film because the cinematography was amazing. Same with like, uh, what was the other one? 
Ben Hur. I mean, do you remember that? The sort of talk oh, I remember ben watching Ben Hur when I was young. And... That was one of the longest ever films going in its time. It How about Spartacus? <laughs> you remember Spartacus? Spartacus? Yeah, Kirk Douglas. It's Kirk Douglas, Spartacus. It's just the cinematography then. It was just more vibrant. It was more colorful. It was brilliant. And look, they had yeah, hundreds upon did. hundreds of actors and actresses in this movie. The extras were unbelievable, yeah. Yes. This was this was happening then. You know, I mean, look at this landscape they're using there to do that, man. It's just like the budgets must be fucking phenomenal in that year. Or less phenomenal, whichever we Imagine if you tried to pay somebody to create a movie like that today. First off, half of it would have been done on green screen. Because they can't actually afford to go and rent the train and the tracks and the scenery and the landscape. Uh, and Green screen, CGI, all that shit. You know what I mean? But that's where movies were made, you know, in them days. You know, that was just fantastic, man. But yeah, it was, I love that film. Absolutely. And thoroughly enjoy it. Mallory's like, even the Three Stooges were in How the West Was Won. Yeah. <laughs> There's a good one, Guns of Navarone. Oh, Guns of Navarone. 633 Squadron. That was another one. All the classic war films. Oh, yeah. Escape. <laughs> um, it? Escape from Alcatraz. That, even that, man. Oh, well, brilliant, man. Let's move on to something even better, in my opinion. I mean, I love my Westerns, don't get me wrong. But how about something like Shawshank Redemption? Oh, yes. What a classic film that, that is. Film. That was one, That was probably one of the, the... Is it Morgan Freeman that was in that? Yeah. I would, I would say that's probably the, one of the best films he's ever made. Yeah. By a mile. Easy peasy. Yeah, and he's done some fantastic ones. They have a bunch of new ones on even Netflix that he's even made recently in the last 10 years. Come on, man. I've had a brain fart. The classic war film where Steve McQueen jumps the fence on his motorbike. How are you, man? What's the fuck? Fuck, fuck, sake? The Great Escape. The Great Escape. There we go. <laughs> Funny enough. <laughs> Fantastic. Stars that were in that. Films them days were just made built the last one. They were brilliant films. I like the other one with them. Did you ever see the one there? Uh, I think it was Paul. It must have been Paul Newman. Cool hand Luke. When you had to eat all the boiled eggs. I watched that and I'm like... It's good, it was, but it's it not like right. everybody yeah. says that it's it was, like the greatest yeah. movie of all time. No, no. I, I like Blues that. Brothers it was, better. It was, probably his, it was probably his best movie, mm. but I wouldn't say it was the greatest movie. Cool on Luke. He was a handsome <laughs> guy. You know, he was good, wasn't he? Very handsome looking guy. But again, everybody come. He, everybody said he was very similar to Steve McQueen because they were they were doing similar stuff at the time, weren't they? Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, they were very similar in that day. The Great Escape. But I, Great Escape, man, that was a Jesus classic film. It was just all the stars that had in it, man. You know, English, American, it was unbelievable. And there was the other one. What was the other one? Uh, Oh, the one with the football man, Pelly was in, and all him, and what was that one again? Was that the Great Escape as well? No, it wasn't. Escape to Victory. Escape to Victory. Had to play the Space Turtle One said that Shawshank Redemption was number one on IMDb. Oh, an amazing film. That was on the TV here the other night, not so long ago. It was actually... Popularity is 101. On it's Drop 13. Brilliant film. It's just the cleverness of that guy. He was so clever at the end. And when obviously when he got out, he says, here's a little bit left for you at the end. He left he left him somewhere, didn't he? It was brilliant. You just come and see me. I'll sort you out. And he did and all. Class full of money. Well, I watched my obligatory showing of Die Hard for Christmas this year. Oh, yeah, the original. Yippee-ki-yay. 
Motherfuck. Neil Diamond. Yeah, I haven't heard Neil Diamond in ages. Oh, God, Neil Diamond. Is he dead? Is he still alive, him? Or is he dead? Let's find out. Is he still alive, Neil Diamond? Because obviously the World Cup, the hard sweet Caroline was the anthem, wasn't it? Yeah, he's still alive. He's still alive, aye. He must be getting on now, though, surely. Must be Born in 1941. Sweet Caroline, Crackling Rose. Well, had, I played those many, 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 well, many, many a time. That's what they had as the World Cup anthem for England. Sweet Caroline. Da, da, da. They were all singing that, weren't they? That's the Pitt theme that's song. Awesome. Pitt University yeah. here in Pittsburgh. That's their theme song for their football team. I, I, there'd be, wow. there, there's got to be hundreds of thousands of if not thousands of, of organizations that use that song as their theme song. Oh, I bet, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Mold, sold more than 130 million records worldwide. One of the wow. best musicians of all time, best-selling musicians of all time. I don't, I, I don't mind a bit of his stuff now and then. Wife wants to know where my new hat is. She's taking a cuddle break with the poochies. He took it off because it was hot, dear. He was very warm, so he took it off. Yeah, she got me a new <laughs> fan of one of those vertical tall fans. It's sitting in the doorway, blowing cool air into this room from the hallway. And I even have the window open in here because it's so warm in here today. It's bloody freezing now, yeah, it's really chilly. By user That's rating, silly, Shawshank right? is still number one. Yeah. You know? Lovely movies. Are there any awesome. movies that you have to watch every week at, or every Christmas? Well, they did have The Wizard of Oz on again. We endured that one again. I can't <laughs> tell you the last time I watched it. Wizard of Oz. I used to watch it a oh. bunch as a kid. I think the biggest one at the moment this year in the UK was Home Alone. That was the more popular one this year, Home Alone. It was Home Alone. There's the one we watched. Die Hard. Grumpy Old Men, oh my God. Grumpy Old Men oh, 1 yes, and 2. Yes. Every Christmas. Um, wonderful Life, That's a, that's a big one. Wonderful life. That's always on. Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, well, hey, funny it works. <laughs> awesome. Who do you know? Who do you know? That was on here last night. And I sat there and I said, there's Alex. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I did. I've been meaning to get that tested out. There you go. Remember last time I fixed it and go, um is... Awesome. There you go, Mrs. H. Thank you very kindly. Now I hope your better half had a fantastic Christmas as well. Even though she had to put up with you. There you go. Hi. <laughs> she had a very Merry Christmas last night. Oh, Oh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Fucking hell, I can remember the last time I seen that. National Lampoon, Jesus. There was loads of their films, man. I was told the National Lampoon this, National Lampoon that. Just, I think you just got a bit tired of it. Got carried end. away with it. Oh, yeah. But it's a lot of the stuff nowadays. It's all remakes and remakes and remakes. No imagination. Now, is they all remaking of an, an old film or, or they're making Disney films into actual real life films now? You know what I mean? Like, fucking the, the Little Mermaid, for example, was me and Barbie, Ken and Barbie. I mean, fucking. God. Yeah, made that into a real. Yeah. 
I think you should just keep them as they are. You know what I mean? That's when they were in the best and the prime. You know what I mean? It's all about the money, dude. That's all they care about. How much can they milk well, out of that yeah. tit? And I, and I know how, you know, how much, you know, the movie technology has come on as well. You know I mean? Obviously CGI and all that shit. But, you know, there's a, there's a point where, you know, start using your fucking imagination again rather than, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to seeing that Offenheimer movie. The guy with the nuclear bomb. I'm really looking forward yeah. to seeing that. I'm just waiting for that to come on stream. That looks really good, that. It's more factual as well as, you know, a movie. It's a guy with a Peaky P- Blinders in the UK. It's like a TV series that was in the UK, Peaky Blinders. It's, it's a guy who was in that. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Gangsters. How about Sound of Freedom? Have you heard of Sound of, Pre- Sound of Freedom? Based oh, on a yeah. true story of a man's mission to rescue children from the darkest parts of the world. Action-packed drama shines the light on the painful reality of child trafficking and the valiant efforts wow. of the this guy that he went and recovered that girl. You know, there's more people trapped in slavery now than there were before our parents were even before, before slavery was even legalized. I mean, obliterated because of the civil war. Well, well, believe it because obviously there's still a lot of it goes on. Especially in the sex trafficking as well. It's just shit loads that still goes on. And they say that even in this movie. You know, when you go and you sell drugs, you sell that drug one time and then it's done. Then you got to get new drugs to sell to the next customer. But a child, especially one that's being sold into the sex trade, can be sold multiple times every single day. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's It's ridiculous. I'm just going to show how much will belittle the human life, in it. You know what I mean? You know, we'll allow that shit to go on. But if you go and sell drugs to somebody, you get fucking shit loads of jail time. Whoa, 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 hang on, rewind here a minute. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, these people do this all the time, and we never hear about it. Nah. Fantastic movie. If you guys are looking for something to watch. Sound of freedom. You've kind of remind you've kind of reminded us of a similar thing there. Obviously, wartime Schindler's List. That was another yeah. fantastic film. Really good film. Well, you know these movies about people like taking risks to get you know to save another person's life. You know what I mean? And, and that's you know that speaks everything to me anyway. People put their own life on the line for somebody else. But absolute utmost respect for. No problem at all with that one. Trying to think what other ones are worthy of mentioning. Guns of Navarone. No, well, there's South Pacific. There's Father Goose. There's a bunch of them. I'm just in here looking at them myself. Just from the library that I bought. Armageddon, Midway, South Pacific, and Father Cle- Goose. Do you ever hear what Father about, Goose? Father Goose. What about Cleopatra, Richard Burton, and, um, oh, God, our name's gone. Fuck me, man, she's famous as fuck. Come on, you dick. Cleopatra, Cleopatra, for fuck's sake. Come on, what the fuck's it called again? Oh my God! What's you called? Two iconic Operation Petticoat. Of the time. Oh my it's God! Hilarious. Fuck. Classic World War Two film. Who the fuck played a? Uh... Man. Uh, 
1963. What's that word? It was Von Ryan's Express. That ring a bell? Von Ryan, that was it. Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton in Cleopatra. Mm. Wow. Can you remember Sam, Samson Delilah with that bloody bloke? What he had a funny name. That was out in them days. Samson. Oh, what was his name? Vic, was it Vic, Vic, Victor, Victor something he was called? Big guy. Massive guy. Oh, what the fuck? How was he called again? I'm disappointed Samson. Dolly Parton didn't put out a series, a Christmas episode this year. She did the coat of many ah. colors. Like, did that two years in a row. That's right. Aye. Well, they're just kicking on new, ain't you? Yeah, we did that a couple weeks ago. We showed her compared to pictures of her in the 70s compared to a picture of her at 70. Mom, Pa Kettle. At all. Man, I haven't heard that in forever in an age. Mom. Oh, Abbott and Costello. I used to love them too. I used to. The horror one was brilliant. Bad, 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 bad. It was classic, that. I used Mallory to Gates is arsenic and old lace. I used to like Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin films. That them two were quite good when they paired up well. Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. Yeah, they used to do a fundraiser every New Year's. And the ball drops. What was that other guy that we used to? He was a drunk man. He used to do the sketches with him when he was a good drunk. You know, oh, I can't think of his fucking name. Oh, he was a good drunk. He was fucking. It was funny as fuck. <laughs> My wife and I watched Pure Country the other night. Pure. Spam. They want the Muppets or the Spam. <laughs> yep. Spam ringtone. Pure country. Fucking hell. Abbott and Costello, man. Jeez. I used to like Laurel and Hardy as well. Laurel and, Har Laurel and Hardy, We Out West was one of my fucking all time favorites. I, I love that fucking film. That was fucking brilliant. I laughed my bollocks off at that film when I first seen that. Laurel and Hardy, We Out West. Brilliant film. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine. Classic. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant film. You know who's done way more movies than I ever thought I'd ever see him in is Tom Hanks. Yeah, he's done a lot, hasn't he? He has done so many oh, movies, so many great movies I've watched. I mean, like, you got Green Mile, you got Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. There's just so many. He's so diverse in the movies that he makes. He's made war movies. He had that HBO series, the green, Band of Brothers. I think the green, for me, the Green Mile and Saving Private Ryan was probably the two I thoroughly enjoyed more. I like Big. But you know that was a bit cheesy eighties film, but yeah, Saving Private Ryan, like it's one of my top war films today. Brilliant, brilliant film, absolutely class. But the Green Mile, you know, that was brilliant as well. You know, just that was classic. Oh, walking the mile, walking the mile, me. piss on me. I like it was in the chair. <laughs> I would like some cornbread and blue, and I would like Mary Sim to sit on my face because I'm one horny motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I catch myself a lot of times watching movies that are real stories. You know, actual remakes of an actual situation in history I, that I, happened. I do, I, I do like stuff like that, like like biography type, you know what I mean? But obviously a movie made yeah. of it. Hidden Figures was one. It's an Oscar-winning, award-winning movie that was done about three black ladies that ended up working at NASA. 
And she was so good at math that she could do the calculations to verify that the computer's numbers that were spit out were accurate for the rockets. Really? Wow. And this was back, was you know, during the whole Civil War. No, not the Civil War. The, the whole movement of, you know, getting blacks equal rights back in the 60s, 50s and 60s. Yeah. So for her to have a position working at NASA, they even talk about her driving to work the one day and she got a flat tire and broke down and the sheriff pulled her over and was going to arrest her until she found out that, oh, she worked at NASA. Mm. And he's like, you want the boys to go to the moon? You need to get me to my work. Oh, on the other side of the coin, I wouldn't like NASA breathing down my neck because I've just fucking arrested the top fucking scientist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit. <laughs> there goes my promotion. <laughs> Zookeeper's yeah, wife man. was another one. It's a good, true story. I'll tell you what I've liked this year that was quite good. It's called Sisu. S-I-S-U. It's a bit over the TT, but what a what a brilliant movie for an action movie! It's it's class. What's it called? Absolutely brilliant. Sisu, S I S U. He's like a gold. He's like a gold digger. Like he's looking for gold in the in the in the war, and he hits. He strikes it lucky. He finds shitloads of gold, but he comes across a German convoy who tries to steal it off him. Then obviously all shit fucking breaks loose. But it's fucking brilliant. Well, I got a movie to watch stuff. later on today. Sisu, it's on my Star subscription at Amazon Prime. It's brilliant film. Look at it, man. It's class, man. I mean, some of it's over the T, no, some of it's OTT, but it's just for an action film. He's a legend. You know, it's brilliant. Like we'll have to check it out for sure. Bit basically he's an ex fucking special forces fucking soldier and that and they didn't realize they were fucking with this fucking man and when he goes to town on them he goes to town on them in big style like but some of the stuff he survives you're like nah god that's brilliant 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 film i thoroughly enjoyed it right up your alley i'd say mate definitely i'll definitely have to give that one a look Awesome film, brilliant film. Absolute brilliant film. See, it's just, you know, just you know, you, you browse movies and there's just one that sticks out. You're going, I'm going to watch that. And then when you watch it, you think that was bloody good. <laughs> what I mean? Mallory Gates agrees with you. Awesome film. Greyhound. Greyhound. Finch. Finch, yes, I watched Finch. That was all right. I wouldn't say it was one of his best films, but it was a good film. Forrest Gump as well. That was another good one he did. Oh, that's Forrest a classic. Gump. I've seen that dozens oh. and dozens of times. Bubba Shrimp. Life Bubba Gump like Shrimp. Box of yeah. I ate a Bubba Gump ah, Shrimp down in man. Tennessee in Gatlinburg. Really? It just makes you wonder, though, doesn't it? Like, you know, if it is, I don't think it's entirely factual, but, you know, after all the shit he'd been through, he ended up being a shrimp fisherman. <laughs> after all that. <laughs> <laughs> you think, you know, after all the shit he went through. He ended That's up how he made his millions. Like, that and investing in Apple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Unreal. Captain, you can come. You can come on my boat. We'll both fish shrimp. Captain's eye read or <laughs> your fucking legs. <laughs> the weird combo. The fucking on the server, brilliant. You love a clever film. Apollo thirteen. Hell yeah, I love that movie. Pam Spragan oh, said. God. That's another Tom Hanks him. movie. Did he play? It? Oh, could I be wrong? No, I don't think he did. The one I was thinking of was somebody who played. He played? Did he? Oh, could it have been him? You know when the boom, that guy landed the plane in the Hudson that made the movie? Was Tom Hanks the pilot in that? I don't think. Was he? I, don't I think, think he was. 
Was was he the pilot in that, Tom Hanks? Sully. Did he play that part? Sully, yeah. Yes. Did he play that part? Yep. I, that, was, that, that, that was one of his most. That was 2016. And the other one was when he's... And then another one where he was a captain of a boat and they got hijacked by the fucking Af- Nigerian terrorists or something. What was that one called? How about this one? Ter- oh. uh, Terminal. He comes in, know, flies oh. into an airport in New York, LaGuardia, or one of the other ones, yeah. right? And he's like from Lagosha or some country or whatever. So anyway, he flies into the airport, and once he gets to the airport, his government is overthrown back home. So he technically has no passport, valid passport from a valid country, because his country is no longer Lakosha, whatever. Yeah. Totally different government thing. So they make him stay in the terminal. So then he figures out he can make money by returning all the little buggies. And every time he does, he gets a quarter, kind of like Golden Aldi's. He returns the buggies and he gets a quarter. And then he goes to Burger King and buys himself a sandwich and makes himself dinner. So then they, yeah. they cut that off of him. So he ends up eating the mustard packets and the ketchup packets and the saltines and all the free stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm. Try to entice him to break out of the ther- the terminal. Nobody's going to chase you. Just go. Yeah, but I can't. I've got no fucking country of origin. <laughs> the thing is, the whole reason why he came to New York is, I'm not going to spoil it for those of you that haven't watched it yet. But he came to the United States for a reason. And you don't get to find that out until you've gotten to find out what his life was like in the terminal. And how he actually ended up getting out of the terminal. It kind of of leads up to that, doesn't it? He's got a way of making these movies where the very end is when it all comes together. Like A Man Called Otto. My wife and I went and watched that in the movie theaters last year when it came out. What a what a sad, depressing kind of movie because of his current circumstances, passing of his wife and the whole nine yards, blah, blah, blah. And it just didn't end the way I thought it was going to end. Mm. A Man Called Otto. Dark movie. Yeah, but they try and make everything they try to try and make everything a positive end and don't they rather than going down the old bad road. I love the fact that they, you never know what you're going to get when you go watch his stuff. It is truly an actual story that sucks you in the time that you're watching the movie. And that's what a good movie is about, isn't it? It gets you drawn right into it, isn't it? Oh, like Da Vinci Code, when you follow him oh. through Da Vinci Code. Yeah, Da Vinci, I was just thinking of that one. And then, uh, speaking of I, darker movies, how about Sleepless in Seattle? Oh my God, that was number one. Sleepless in Seattle, what a classic movie. What a dark time in his life. Passing of his wife. Moving to a whole new town to start all over again because there's just no way you can continue to live in this town because every place reminds you of your, your late wife. What about uh, Castaway? Remember that one? The ball. Mr. Fuck yep. with the car and Mr. The fucking Fuck ball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was the only one in the movie. The whole freaking movie was him. Yeah. It was brilliant, man. Him and a fucking volleyball or whatever it was. I was a ball who drew fierce when he called it Mr. Something. I'll tell you the one that I watched recently of him was quite good was News of the World. That was not, it was like, a, he was in like a Western type of thing. And he was a type of bloke that went from town to town telling everybody what was going on in the fucking world. And that, that, that was quite a, a cool film. And you know me in dog movies, Turner and Hooch is always a favorite of mine with Tom Hanks. You never forget oh, about Hooch. Hooch. Eating the seat cushion right out of the car. Keep waiting yeah. for one of my dogs are going to do that- the same thing. That one I was thinking of when he was on a boat was Captain Phillips when the boat got hijacked by the terrorists. That's the one I was thinking of. It's the pennies dropped. Captain Phillips, that was it. Larry Crown was another one of his movies. I just, it was good, but it wasn't like his best. It, Wilson, <laughs> name of that ball. Wilson, that was it. Wilson, he called it Wilson. <laughs> what is it? He bastard said it was Watson. But it's amazing how some actors can do that on a single film and just make it still interesting. 
How about a bastard just said there was actually an Iranian guy trapped at an airport in Paris for 10 years. Same situation <laughs> yeah. as Terminal. Really, man. Yeah, I mean, like, a, like I say with that one, it's just him, but the, the, another one that you compared to was um, Will Smith, legend. Uh, I am legend. Oh. That's what was it? But the one who's in the town on his own. He's Will on his Smith. own because of a zombie apocalypse. And, and that, what was it? Was it I am legend? Was it, was it called that one? He was on his own in a zombie apocalypse. And it was just him and his dog. But again, you could get into the story and you could follow it and... Well, that was a really good film. Oh, was, was the Pursuit of Happiness. Movie. That's my wife's favorite yeah. Will Smith movie. I've just seen a one. It was it, it was it called Entrapment or Enscarpment. I think it was a recent one by him where he was actually a slave. He was a slave. Back Emancipation. Years, Emancipation was it. that movie. That's it. But good film, that one, mind. Pam Spragan says, just got this in, in their email. Dear Prime member, we are writing to you today about an upcoming change in your Prime Video experience. Starting January 29th, Prime Video movies and TV shows will include limited ads. Ads. Advertisements. Yeah, just like YouTube. Have the ads. No! Jump them in. Anything but... As if they're not making enough fucking money, the greedy bastards. You know what I mean? And if you're on Amazon, you can already choose to watch commercial sponsored shows. Yeah. Now you don't have a choice. Now you're forced to watch the commercials. Same with this YouTube. Now YouTube, you can, you can subscribe. Was it you can really buy into YouTube to get rid of the adverts? Fuck off. Nothing. Being enough fucking money, you bastards. Fucking honest to God, man. Some of these companies, man. Oh, it's well, that's like this show every week. They're, they keep they keep trying to push in there. Let us put the commercials in your show. Let us put the commercials in your show. Let us put the commercials in. No. So I check yeah. every single week when I upload and, and schedule this stream. Yes, I want to monetize it, meaning before you go to watch it, like if you're on the replay crew, you will watch one commercial. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe they'll squeeze two in. But once the show starts, yeah. I have it selected that I have to manually put the ads in. And guess what I do every single week? Oops, I forgot to put the ads in. <laughs> Stick them at the end. <laughs> you get it in the end of, beginning of the show and the end of the show. That's it. But it's a five-hour show. I don't care. the fucking whole point we're not here to fucking entertain you we intend to entertain an audience you know what i mean fuck you lot you know, yes. as, if not, as if they're not making enough money out of people you think it's a clever it's a, it is a clever analogy isn't it, when it ah yeah we'll get members of the public to upload videos on the hour server. you and i could very we'll easily create a three-hour show every single week and get everything done in three hours but for you and I, yeah, it would become cool. very repetitive very quickly. Within six months, we yeah. would get sick of doing it because it's the exact same thing. Bang, 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 bang. We're here for the vape family. Yeah. We're here to let you guys interact with each other, chat with each other, catch up on what's going on in our lives. Listen to us ranch from time to time. Go look at old retro vapes. Come up with random recipes. I mean, we're here as a family just sitting down once a week and chatting and getting to know each other. And we're not here to make a fortune. Again, it's, it's Would it be nice to make some money and cover my cost? Order. Yes, but I'm not going to subject you guys to continuous bullshit advertisements for some VPN shit that you're never going to buy anyway. Exactly. Here's a question for you. How many of the commercials that you get served by YouTube is something you might actually spend money on one day? Not, well, not a thing. Nothing. Not one thing. I don't ever recall getting a commercial for something I might actually spend money on. Not once. Not a thing. Not, not one. Not a thing. Not a fucking thing. All right, we can't talk about Will Smith without bringing up Men in Black. 
Oh, without a doubt. Here comes the man in black. <laughs> yeah, go look at the light right here. If that was, if only that was something we could do, really, in it, you're gonna fucking. Forget now that is it. something that is definitely Goodbye. worth monetizing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you look at if this pen right here. About, okay? Yeah. You just look at that, mate. You're gonna just poof, totally forget about what you've just seen. Boom. Imagine all the politicians you could fucking. <laughs> what was that? You're gonna mm, take over the world? Poof, no, you're not. Yeah. You love what vaping. You, were actually, you actually love vaping. <clears throat> there you go. You the next time you are giving a speech in front of the Senate, <laughs> you will talk about how you know someone personally that is vaping and how it was the only thing they got them that quit smoking. Yeah. <clears throat> Have some of that. If only, yeah. But the thing is, right, you know, it's a movie. But I bet there is a department somewhere in whatever country that is dealing with UFOs. Got to be, yeah. What the heck was that one movie where the guy had to tell the truth? I think it was Jim Carrey was in it. Oh, Liar Liar. Yes. <laughs> and he had to tell the truth. What? That's right, Liar Liar. Yeah. He was defending some wife that had an affair or someone in you, Shag. <laughs> you did, Shag, hey, for his money. <laughs> Wild Wild West. That was a great movie, Will Smith. Wild Wild, Wild, Wild West. Then again, you've hit another guy, Jim Jim Carrey. He was another fantastic... Hey, bastard says, hey, fuckers. I came here for a retro vape. Where's my fucking retro vape, you pieces of shit? I've been sitting here listening it's to so you for three yet. hours, three and a half bloody hours, and you haven't even done a retro vape. All right, mate, we got it's you covered. Coming. A long time ago in a galaxy not so far away, DJ Alex had to turn up his lights so that you could actually see his ugly mug while I show you the beautiful atemporal RTA. This lovely behemoth of a rebuildable product is still sealed in its original packaging. And there you go. A beautiful oh, monstrosity glasses, for us man. to tear into today. Girl, Holy cow. Look tank. at that. Bubble glass and a straight glass. I'm probably going to break trying to get out of this packaging. And the tank comes with a straight glass. You don't see that often very now, do you? Loads of spare Hell tanks. no. Glasses. And the good old blue screwdriver. Hell yeah. One blue screwdriver, several assorted O-rings, and a coil, and some spare grub screws, some spare other screws, and a chimney <sighs> extension. Holy moly, we got a taller chimney. That's for that straight glass, the chimney extension. Wow. And the bubble glass good. is also a chimney extension requirement. That's why they came yeah. up with three of them. Well, that is still a cool thing, though, isn't it? Quarter turn top cap. Beautiful tension on that O-ring. Let's tear this apart. Got a ring on the bottom. Steam crave design there. Spin it on the build stand and yank out this build deck. So what is it again? I'll see if I can dig out the year it was out. Look at that. Honeycomb airflow on the two sides, not the bottom. 
kind of reminiscent of Deuce's Jack Mongrel. Kind of. Was it again? I'll see what you. I'll see what you. Atemporal. What's it called again? Sorry. Atemporal. Damn A-temporal. vape and the mind flayer. Atemporal. A temporal fucking hell you'd actually still get it. No. No, you're showing the pod, you dick, I don't want that. Oh my well, Here's the gone. chimney extension. Beautiful O-ring on there. Some nice fine threads. All right. Pull out their coil. Unfortunately, it is not marked what the material is or any of the specifications. She is a three millimeter coil though. It looks, by what I'm seeing, it looks like it's only about a year old, mate. Imagine that. Probably because this was back when uh, Element Vape was first using their courier service. And I probably ordered it as soon as it came out because I'm like, oh, that looks cool. I got to review that. And I ordered a thing and bloody got lost in their si- shipping system and took me three months to get it and by that point I'm like oh fuck, there's already 10 reviews on this thing I ain't doing it yeah it looks like it's roughly about a year old because they've also done, done like some kind of bam like some kind of billet box as well on it like um, that's a burrow tank they've done an eight temporal four and one burrow tank on it all right. The actual dropping shit. And then the dunny. Right into my tool bag. Don't need a digital multimeter. Don't need a capacitor reader. ESR meter. Yes. You want some deoxy? Roughly about a year old. <sighs> Why not? Let me dig past the soldering iron. Solder sucker. Reach into the bottom of my bag because naturally I had to fall all the way to the bottom. Son of a gun. As always. That's a single coiler. Oh dear, you drop it in the hole. Might be okay, like single coiler. Fucking... Matt, this is what happens when you drink a whole bottle of stuff on a live stream before you actually get to build anything. You can't find jack shit. Is that what you're basically saying? Ah, I got the dropsies. <laughs> I dropped the top cap that screwed on. Now I dropped the bubble glass. Oh god, that's not good, man. <clears throat> That ain't good. Let's try this again. One bubble glass. Yeah. One chimney extension. Oh, shit. What the fuck? Ah, damn it. You spill your beer. No, when I popped the cut, it went... It fizzed. <laughs> fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Give us a boy, I need a fucking cloth now. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Phillips head screwdriver, please.
I've got a cloth. I've got a cloth. Oh, damn. What the Fire hell is this? Box. It fizzed. It's a single coil deck. It's a single coiler. Prep the coil like we normally do. Do like we do the mongrel. Straight across. Drop the coil in the tank. Come on, mate. I lost the spring because they do have springs on the bottom of this. Interesting design. Which means there should be a spring on this one, as there is. Right there. Right chair. there buggy that one's too big I need to have my three millimeter coiling rod I don't know what I did with it. Sure. <laughs> I was going to use this. Oh, dear. Right, that's my... I don't know why they've done that. Are you winning? Are you winning with us, Bill, sir? Are you winning? Are you winning? Oh, no, mate. I buggered it up. <laughs> oh, no, man. Now the question is, is that down to operator error or alcohol intake? <laughs> Might be a little bit of both. I can't say for sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't rightly know <laughs> which of these two are supposed to be situated. I thought this was a guide for where you're supposed to put the coil. But you know, you have a couple drinks and it doesn't quite matter as much as it did before you started. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that'll work. As long as you can clamp it down, my friend. Clamp down like a $10 hooker on Friday night. 
<laughs> All right, mate. Point three five ohms. That looks disgusting the way I have her shit up in there. It's coming back this way instead of coming out that way. That's what happens when you don't have your coiling rod. Trying to make do with some stuff that wasn't intended for that purpose. You can back top that. We'll get her done one way or the other. One way or the other, we'll get her done. Bit of fine tuning, my friend. Yeah, point three two. Let's dry burn it. See what we got going on. How many hot spots can we come across? Oh, it's all coalesced all on one end. Imagine that. <laughs> Wonder why it's doing that. Might be because I boogered up the coils and I tightened her down. Wasn't supposed to happen like that. Come on. Come on, little baby. You want to get nice and evenly glowing so we can have an enjoyable vape. Come on, man. I'm not Jay Hayes. I don't want this thing to go bad. Ooh. Hey. Right in the middle. Right in the middle there, Mandy. Wow. Let's turn her down. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, I gotta zoom in. Come on, stay focused. Still a little tiny bit right in the middle. Da, 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 da. Beautiful. Happy days. Happy days, my friend. I'm out of eggnog. <laughs> well, there, matey, I think it's time to pull out the old cotton. How big are the wicking ports? So they don't look very big. Nine. What the hell did I do? How thick is that? Book? How fucking thick is that? Come on. Holy shit. You little booger. I'll pull you through one way or the other. You're coming with me. So that was one seriously tight fucking shoelace end, wasn't it? Jesus, fuck. Needle too tight. But that's all right. We'll make her work. Flavors! Hello and welcome, mate. Hey, buddy. We are abusing the atemporal. Whack. Whack. A little under tickle action for your enjoyment. <laughs> All right, Mike, calm down. <laughs> A little haircut from the top. Reminded me of an episode on Monk where he goes to see a dry cleaner to fix his buttons and Monk expects everything to be parallel. I want it parallel. And the little Chinese lady says, no, no, crisscross, crisscross is my standard. He's like, you ruined it. <laughs> no, Mr. Monk, <laughs> it's my standard crisscross. Just throw my shirt in the garbage. Throw my shirt in the bin. I want a new shirt. You ruined it. No, Mr. Monk, it's crisscross. 
There's a statement for you. How high is a Chinaman? Look at that one. How high is a Chinaman? Yeah. Listen, the Chinaman in the John Wayne movie, his camp cook, wasn't a camp. He was a sheriff. Actually, he wasn't a sheriff. He was a Texas Ranger. <laughs> Took care of the cat and the drunk. Okay, what's going on here? The question remains. The question remains is how high is a Chinaman? How high is a Chinaman? I'll Mate, you could have told me I need to center it in camera. Sorry, mate, I was a bit distracted by the fucking pool of fucking beer I'm about to suck out the carpet. <laughs> I'm distracted by the fact that none of this wants to go in the hole. I'm thinned her down. Straighten her out. Anybody in chat figure out my conundrum there? How high is a Chinaman? Can you just figure it out? How high is a Chinaman? Figure it out. Holy moly fuck, I've never ever thought I'd get that. I've you get? had a dry hit in a Titan. A dry hit in a Titan? You've got to be fucking kidding me. Did you run out of e-liquid there, mate? I... No, I'm an idiot. I've got the fucking padlock on. What a fucking bell end. What a dick. Well, that's uh, even better than running out of juice because all you know you got to do is open the juice flow control and guess what, mate? Yeah. You'll be I'm back in business. Square one. Lovely. Can I, what the fuck? Nah, I'm very, my fucking brain lately, the fucking, honestly, I'm fucking Mate, you know shit. what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the Profile Unity RTA. And he kind of reminiscent of the Kylan M, where you got to sit there wow. and meticulously play with the wicking to try and get it to go in the hole. And I'm so ghastly worried about this bloody thing giving me a dry hit because I've overstuffed the cotton into these puny little holes. Some say the door, they look very, very small, don't they? I mean, they look fucking tiny, no, it's small. This it's like too long. Laugh, right? You put a you put a three millimeter coil in, and then they put fucking holes that are fucking like fucking for fucking two and a half. And think you've got to you've got to stuff all that in there. Like, are you for fucking real, mate? Mate, you don't have to worry about this with the arbiter. Yes, it benefits to thin it out because you'll get more flavor because it'll have more juice capacity. But you drop the coils in. Yeah, but secure it so it's centered. Forgiving. Cut the fucker off. Drop your coils in, and then run the cotton through there and only thin it out so that it easily drops down in. You can put it in depending on what cotton you have. Like if I use fire bolt, I don't thin it. I just cut it and drop it. My cotton here is usually pretty thick, so I have to thin it. But you don't think this thin and cotton thing is a bit, a bit of a fad? Because like when I when I'm in the early days of vaping, I, I never thinned me coffin cotton, never ever did. Cut it the length and dropped it in, and it worked. So why all of a sudden everybody thinning the cotton? Because they're maximizing right. other parts of the deck that in hinges upon the juice wells that they used to have 
be like yeah, you know you half did, your freaking you deck you never did that with all with so you know you dropped it in and obviously you didn't pack it in like a fucking you know like a suitcase and to me see i'm thinking of the like trying to think of the logical side the more cotton you've got to an extent the more it's going to soak up the juice you know what i mean sometimes because i think if, if you put your cotton too thin you end up flooding your fucking deck and it's shit you know what i mean i'm gonna put this clementine citrus mango in here i'm debating i'm like what do i put in here do i put my black currant soda in do i put my cherry bakewell in I'm like, I only got 30 mils and a half of that's already gone, so now I'm putting this in. I sincerely hope that this... Get me dude all up. My voice, meter potato, yep, it's fucking... Yep. Dead. Piss off, you bastard. It's like, you know how it, when it does, it just dumps it, you know, and then voice material just goes, that's not working anymore, we're not going to have it. Boom, dumped. You know what I mean? You paid for the license, so why is it quitting? No, no, I'm saying, you know, like when it, when it, when a device like these things starts to die, it just dumps it. <laughs> it just says fuck that. Oh, your Don't Bluetooth, yeah, the Bluetooth devices yeah. when they die, you it screws the whole thing up. Yeah, it just says fuck it. We're not using that anymore. <laughs> Even though I can still hear you. <laughs> All right, matey. Voice Be Potato says, fuck you, not using it. Come on. When speaking of that, you know, I've, I've had another another update and then it just fucked it all up again. So I've just purely done what i've done by chance just so you can fucking hear us to be honest with you i am i'm gonna put her on the jackaroo since i'm no longer using that for the blaze i'll tighten that top cap up a random question do you use ear trumpet use what ear trumpet what's ear trumpet it basically picks up all it's it's it takes out you no know, like when you go on your windows little volume icon you right click and blah blah but your ear trumpet shows you all your fucking devices when you when you open it and you can assign them devices to whatever output you want nope i do my routing the old-fashioned manual way i go into windows settings and i list them all and then tell them oh no the, the trumpet does yeah, hey, trumpet does it. It, it, it. Just, it's just an easier way. You've still got your original window settings if you want to fuck about with them. What the heck? Oh, atomizer short. No way. That's just, that's bullshit. That's a first, baby. Atomizer short. There's no way it can be touched to the side. It'd only be a cut off, surely. That's so odd. <laughs> Pardon me. That doesn't say atomizer short. It says 0.36. Well, again, mods, mods are a different kettle of fish on the point three six. What the hell was all that about them? This wasn't um, pushed up the whole way, which means the deck wasn't seated the whole way, which means this wasn't screwed down the whole way. Ah. Oh, well, so it must have been cockeyed in there just a hair. I don't know. Odd. Very odd. Very odd, sir. A temporal. 
It actually looks like you've got a dab of healing, but on that mod, there's a very shiny little bit on it. Uh oh. Yeah. She leaking. She leaking? No way. What do you think? Holy shit. Oh no, we'll give her a shot and see what happens. Give her a gun. Flavor's really good. I would kind of expect that from a single coil, like, to be honest with you, but yeah. Now the question is, is this going to leak out? Hmm. Prefer the Arbiter's airflow over this one. The Blaze Solo has a candy cane in there, so it's a lot punchier on the flavor, but it also has a lot more airflow than the A Temporal. Well, you, you would think with it being a single coil device, it's going to be a bit tight. Uh, it's single coil, and if you remember, there was only honeycomb on the very sides of the coil, yeah. and actually it's not on the sides, it's underneath, so there's like a chamber under the coil, and the honeycomb's coming in from both sides, so it's smashing against each other and then obviously being drawn up by the velocity of the airflow. So you're equally encompassing the bottom part of the coil going up. It's kind of old school technology, even though it's only a year old. In theory, it's the gun for the under coil airflow, which, you know, is a classic. It works. And it's legit, just that little slot there and one on the other ah, side, yeah. all being forced through. So it's a very restrictive airflow. I'm trying to determine if it's actually got any sponginess to it. Mm. No, it's not spongy. Like the blotto can get spongy because they have the honeycomb on the outer airflow rings and the airflow potential inside going right to the coils is more than the outside. So you're yeah. legit creating a vacuum inside of there and the airflow is being restricted by the collar. Whereas a lot of these other ones have the restriction right next to the coil and it's much more airflow capacity coming from the side. So you yeah. do create a vacuum, but it's in a smaller chamber than it is when you have the restrictions like on the blotto where it's all the way on the outside. You legit have to draw a vacuum in the whole thing plus the airflow chambers. Yeah. I've seen that in a bunch of the other tanks. That's not a problem with the blotto max. Because it obviously balanced that airflow equally between the two of them. See? My answer has been answered. To my how high is a Chinaman. His name is how high. His name is how high. <laughs> Got you, you motherfucker. <laughs> that you did, mate. That you did. I love stuff like that. That, that just that just rocks my boat. Stuff like that. that, and that, and I hate it when you can't get when I can't get it. It's like you. All right. So for looks, that's gorgeous. Well done, Mallory. 
simple stainless steel tank. Nice chimney extension on there to give you plenty of e-liquid capacity. It, it does look nice. So I'll give it that. But that really wicking, nice. what a pain in the wazoo. Little tiny window wells. They got to be cut exactly the right length so that they don't like. You put them down and then they're like the length is so long it curls up and then comes back down to the coil. So you have to snip yeah, them at exactly the right length. You have to thin them out enough to fit into that little well. And then because of how short that it, that wicking is coming out of the coil, it wants to floof up, especially in the winter time. So trying to get them all parallel and all going down. I mean, I could have covered them in e-liquid and painted them, but then you always run the risk of over stuffing the cotton in the bottom. That's true. That's so true. And it's not leaking now. We'll see if I leave it on the desk and come back tomorrow if it shits its bed. Again, Flavors a nine, nine point five. Looks are, are wonderful. It's just that wicking. I think some martyrs are challenging to to wick. You know, if, if you look at the wrong, mongrel, you get it wrong back. Okay. Yeah. Look at the mongrel. Look at how much the wicking wells are in there. Massive. Oh, huge. The coils come out. You drop them down. If you don't wick them, I mean, you don't thin them, don't worry about it. It'll perfectly fine on the mongrel. You just snip them, snip them, drop them, done. Yep. Some are a bit fiddly, some aren't. That's the only Achilles heel for this tank. Those wicking wells. Wicking, yeah, wicking's got to be spot on. on. If you get them spot on, you're going to get a fantastic experience, and this will probably last you a good while. But if your wicks are too long, you're you're going to not be able to maximize your juice flow. If the wicks are too short, you're probably going to flood your gonna, your mod. Yeah, flood it. You're going to flood it out. It is trial and error. It's a bit of trial and error with everything new. You've got a bit of trial and error. The standards for these tanks and these mods nowadays is so high because, I mean, the Arbiter set the barrier right up here. Simple, easy, drop the coils in, snip them, drop your cotton in, cut them. You're good to go. Job done. Never leaks. So even when you can match the airflow and the flavor and everything, you still get docked because it's harder for you to wick it. Blaze met that challenge and it, it's fantastic. That's why it's been my all day vape since I did the review. <laughs> you do like that, don't you? Yo, Blaze. I never thought I'd see the day where I have a perfectly good ready wicked Arbiter, the battery dies, and I'm happy leaving it on the table because I got something that's just as good. Actually, it's better. And a single coil as well. Ooh. And a single coil, so you use less electricity over time. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the Blaze Jewel, I mean, I've got that one. And even that's still a, a quite a phenomenal tank. It's it's fantastic tank. Okay. Again, see, I'm... I'm I'm not really a single coil vapor, so that's why I don't really invest a lot of time in single coil tanks. You know, I'm, I'm my my preference is dual. You know, period. Mine always has been um, as well. The Blaze Solo changed that. that. I, I probably got that kind of mindset. You know, like yeah. I mean, I've got a couple of single coil tanks, which yeah, they're good, but I still go back to the jewel i think it's just mainly for the power you know i mean i like to sit and be 80 90 100 watts you, a lot of singles you can't really do that as such without you know obviously having to fuck about with your coil to do so i suppose you could do that all right one last thing that I wanted to make sure we get to today. Last week's vlog, we tried to mix up a mango pineapple citrus mix. Oh, and yes. during our show,
That's not the best screenshot of us two. Look at what faces. Fucking hell. We look like we're fucked. <laughs> we were. <laughs> I came up with this monstrosity. Just trying to whip it together. Five, four, three, call it a day. Didn't work. That's right. Yeah. Right. It did not. No. Darren left us a comment. Try this, mate. Ready? Seven nectarine, five mango, and three golden pineapple, and one citrus mix. And TFA sweetener will get us closer than... Oh. So, that's what we're going to do today. Go for it, my friend. Control all print screen. Where'd you go, mate? There you are. There's paint. Now I got the recipe there. Let's go our lovely ELR. Let's create a recipe. I cannot freaking type today. That's that's a cool one there by Mallory. I, I like that, Mallory. I like your positive fucking outlook. My New Year's resolution to help all my friends gain 10 pounds so I look skinnier. <laughs> that's a bloody good idea. Ma never feels, Mallory. Never feels. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. All right, we're going to make a 30 mils of this. Do it our stock six. Thirty ml. The tester tank. Nectarine plus. He said seven. We got mango. Was, it, was that five? I mate, that's a five. Golden pineapple. Three. Citrus mix. One. I mean, there is some, there is some prominent flavors in there. Like if you think that you know they're gonna counteract each other or knock each other out. I just cannot type today. That's just a typical day for me, matey. Kind of day fucking jack shit. Flavors is just put in chat. They says you can reverse the mango nectarine plus if you need more mango flavor. So that's, that's kind of defended where you are on it. No, I think uh, the citrus mango, uh, citrus nectarine is dominant in this e liquid. Yeah. But it's kind of you, if you prepare you're, it's a also mango citrus than... mix is one and seven of nectarine. So maybe the mango. Nah, that should be good. We'll see. Yeah. I can always flip it. All right. Nectarine plus mango. Golden pineapple. All he's basically saying is if you put the mango to seven and the nectarine to five, you're going to have a more prominent mango flavor. So if, if you want to go that way. And sweetener TFA, we're going to go with uh, one. 
it's a commercial juice. You're going to want to get it sweet. We'll try that. What do you think? It looks good, Seth. Give it a bash. Oh, get out of there. Yeah. Holy moly dory. All I can say, if I haven't put any weight on this Christmas, is something seriously wrong. Perfect. Flavors also poorly said you will find they will most likely be using 2% sweetener in commercial juices. If that helps. <clears throat> okay. There's our Nick. Secret sauce. Sound corrected. <laughs> St. Nicholas has come to visit us in the laboratory, and today <laughs> we are adding some of his golden nectar into this recipe. Is that what we're calling it, St. Nick? <laughs> Listen, I just got done watching Bad Santa and Bad Santa 2, so maybe I shouldn't be saying those kind of things. Him and his golden nope. nectar. And the big lady in the oh. bathroom. Well, this is it. This is it, man. Holy moly. Holy moly, as they say in your part of the world. Alphabetical order, we shall continue with a little bit of citrus mix. 0.3 grams for 1%. Point three, get in there, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, on the button there as well, pretty much. Now we'll move on to some golden pineapple, which I'm halfway empty on, because I love I pineapple. Like the only one I'm out of more, even more than that, is pineapple. Ah. Ramp. Key ingredient in hunky Hawaiian punch. Pineapple and golden pineapple all right point nine for this one hair over next we'll go with mango another flavor i love not a fan of personally but you know 1.2 I can't wait for you to try the hunky swine punch let me know what you think of it oh shit I do apologize flavors yeah but be flat out of work I need to email the guy Well, to be honest with you, mate, my list is short but sweet. It's just macarapa pie. That's, that's all it is, my friend. It's just, it's just that's basically it. <laughs> I love that juice. It's <laughs> been the old macarapa pie and any new flavors, really. No, I'm, I'm open, to, open to anything, but the maca. Definitely. <laughs> I'm just in the time zone, like I say, I mean, I've been working like six days a week up until Christmas Day. I've had Christmas Day off, got the day off, then I'm back in the morrow, so I've just been snowed on the work, matey. As simple as that, and lost track of time and all that bullshit as you do. Some days I don't even know what day of the week it is, some days, honestly, it's that bad. 
yeah, it's just a very simple mug apple pie and any new flavours, and that will do me. But I'll stick in an email for you, buddy. That's more like the sweetener that's in this juice. Ah. Uh, gotcha. One percent. I hope you've stuck on your list, man. That mucker apple. You left. You've got to stick it on your list, mate. I did. I it's did. Just, it's just. It's just so wow. I gave him a list of stuff I didn't have here, plus obviously the ones that I'm running out of for the hunky swine punch. And oh, uh, Steve, when you get that, when you get that, do it as a single flavor test. Honestly, you'd be blown away by it. Really. Two point one eight of PG. Thank you, Darren. Appreciate it, sir. <laughs> I do apologize to you, mate, honestly. As you all know, a lot of you all know, I drive for Amazon now and, well, you know, Amazon or an online shop and Christmas and all that stuff. It's been absolutely mad. You know, the two shift system in, we've been absolutely flat out. I'd imagine that's going to continue till the new year. So I do apologize for not being in touch. I'm absolutely, whew, honestly, even Alex, you know, he said, have you seen this? No. Have you seen this? No. Where have you been? Work. <laughs> Which is kind of true, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Sure is, mate. I've never... So when you're weeks, flat out, you're I flat out. What are you supposed to do? Honestly, I'll tell you, some weeks I haven't even turned my computer on. That's how busy I've been. I've, I've never even turned it on. It's sat there off. But next week, oh, I can't wait for next week. Yes. When my little parcel arrives and we've got some hardware to sort out and I've got to sort out sending a nice abroad package out myself. Oh, I want to see the look on your face when you see what else I threw in the box. Yeah, I'm very, I, I might do a live opening. I might do, no, can I, can I wait? <laughs> nah, you don't need to do that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I might record myself opening it and then play it. <laughs> I don't think I would wait from what Thursday to Tuesday. Fuck, that's nearly a week. Fuck that. <laughs> no, mate. You're supposed to get a Thursday, which means you'll see a Thursday night when you get home from work. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll roll the camera. <laughs> Just open it, enjoy. Yeah. Your dog will thank you later. Even the kids, the kids say, oh, they've got any American sweets in there. I said, I don't know. I said, I'm not worried, you stuck with it. I said, <laughs> I, two pounds of assortment. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't the assortment that the picture had promised me because I ordered it from Amazon. Ah, I, I next see. year, I'm going to go to the store and pick up my own assortment. I'm going to pick up the item specifically. <laughs> yeah, that's no problem, mate. No problem. I like to say you're doing a nice rework for this juice. I'm very impressed how you put yourself out for it. I you see how easy that, that is? Yeah. No fanning well about. Cut, cut, drop, done. I'm, I'm and you wonder why I'm so hard on the atemporal. Yeah, I see where you're coming from with it, mate. I see where you're coming from. 
single coil. And I find this is much easier to put the coils into than it did on that one. They have little springs on there that are supposed to pop up, but they don't ride high enough for you to slip the coil underneath it. Yeah. You know what I mean? This one has notches in the side, so you raise your leg, your screws up, you raise your screw up, you cock the coil the in, tighten it, tighten it, done. The, lock, the notch locks it in, doesn't it? Yes. I've seen a few tanks that do that, and it is a good idea. You need that notch. Smock, score 18. Point two three forty watts. I'm gonna need more power than that. God, smells I good. I love this fucking mod. Still dry, I like. Need to let that tear uh, drop a bit. Needs more sweetener. I'm gonna have to let this steep for a day. Not got any real separation in it. No real distinct flavor. Just VG. 17% flavoring in this recipe. Yeah, it could be a steep, I suppose. Definitely need more than 1% sweetener. TFA sweetener. Matter of fact, I'm going to put another 0.3 in there now. Because I'm not getting any sweetness to this recipe. Sucralose is such a potent sweetener. I mean, other, other than Neotame, I don't know anything that's sweeter than that. Then try a, try a knuckle test on it as well. See if we get up a knuckle test. All right, there's another percentage that brings it up to two percent. Going to edit the recipe to reflect that two percent. Sweetness is right at 2%. Where's this other juice at? That Nectarine Plus isn't coming through like I thought it would at 7%. Way more sweetener in here. And the nectarine is really, really prominent. I almost want to add some orange to this recipe. Feels like it's not an undeclared flavor on here. Come on.
Yeah, I think the sweetness in this one is probably at least 3%, if not. The problem is with making it with 6% or 6 milligram of Nick, that becomes a prominent flavor on your tongue. Gives it that bite, that peppery bite. Smell wise, citrus mango is definitely a scent on there. This one is forefront, forefront nectarine oranges, and a definite sensation, a definite smell of that guava. You know, they're like the green skinny smell of a guava. Or am I thinking of mango? Mango. Could be mango, my friend. Could be mango. Mango. <clears throat> yeah, because mango is the one you got to cut into dices and then peel the skin back and then slice it off. Yeah, we'll do little mango cubes and get them peeled off the skin. Need more punch to this um, nectarine. Uh, it's just a go with the orange. The guava is there, but it's not as earthy as the other recipe, if that makes sense. So go with the orange at 0.5 to 0.1% maybe. probably going another half to not by one percent of the orange when I found them I'll highlight this one for you it is where am I that one there have you ever seen that one yeah half 0.5 to 0.1 percent maybe because he says what you'll be getting is the green mango flavour. Uh. Go to the recipe. Edit. Add. Orange. Point one five. This this is what I like about some of the mixes that you know that come on, including yourself. You know, you, you try a recipe and you're gone. You know what that needs? About half percent more. That half percent more. I, I just love the way you can just mentally calculate. For me, it, I, it I haven't gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, well, add a point five of this or point one of this. For me, it's like, yeah. what actual flavoring profile is missing? Like. Ah. There's there's no oranginess to this. As a nectarine, you should get a punchy orange that's a little citric and yeah. sour and yeah. reminiscent of sour. Well, and but you can recognize the flavor that's missing. That's that's a good start, isn't it? You know what I mean? I recognize the direction that it needs to go, not necessarily the individual yeah. flavors. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm thinking. That's the hard part for me is, you know, there's like six different oranges. Which one do you pick from? Which one's going to bring it towards it without muddling something else? Well, the, the, that's always been my point when, you know, like beginners are out there and they go, okay, then what, what would you recommend for some basic flavors? But you've got that many companies making that many different versions of a single flavor. You know, that makes me more of a minefield for, for a newbie. You know, you're like, what the fuck? For a newbie? 
you pick a five star recipe that's got more than one rating on it that interests you and buy the ingredients to make that recipe. And you have to buy the exact companies and flavors that are in that recipe. Yeah. Build that, adjust it to your desires if you don't like it exactly the way it is, and pick a different recipe. When I got started, that's what I did. I picked five recipes that I wanted to make and bought all the ingredients I needed to make those five. Probably Once I got that in, already. I mixed all five of those. I played with them a little bit. I adjusted percentages up and down to see what they're like. Then I went and single flavor tested each of those flavors to see, okay, well, this was a good at 2%. This is, if you push 2% in this one, it tastes like chemically. You need to go at like half a percent in this stuff. Yeah and take notes of everything you do along the way. And then once you take notes of it and you start learning it all, you have references to go back to go, okay, well, I wanna add this to the ingredient. What percentage do I push this at? Yeah. Well, at half a percent, it was too much. It overtook this recipe. So let's go with a quarter percent. Let's go with 0.1. Then we'll try 0.2 and we keep working our way up until you get what you want. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like, again, you said it yourself in the past, I think, Different manufacturers will have their different version of the flavor, you know what I mean? And you've got to kind of find out that one as well. Not necessarily to a recipe, but, you know, as you go along, along your journey, you know what I mean? You might say, well, that orange is shit. And then you may say, well, try this orange by this company. And it might be a total different ball game. you know what I mean? It's a massive, massive learning curve. Still more orange needed. <laughs> it's still lacking in the orange depot, layer. Yeah? <laughs> See, the only problem with TFA sweetener, in my experience, is it can mute other flavors. Got ya. And that's why I typically go with the super sweet because it doesn't muddle flavors. It's strictly adding sweetness. Mm. TFA sweetener by itself, when you knuckle test it, is beautiful, sweet, wonderful flavor. And you can push the percentage in it, but some flavorings don't like the ethyl maltol in there. Whether they have yeah. some ethyl maltol in their formula for their flavor, I don't know. But this recipe here needs more punch to it. It needs more sweetness to it. We're along the right track. We're better than the recipe we had last week. But like there's no separation, there's no punchiness to the flavors yet. I'll check it again tomorrow, see what it's like. Cause I've had that before where you let it sit for overnight and that's all it takes, and then all of a sudden you get a little bit more. Yeah, see, maybe you like see push the orange a bit, maybe it's a bit more of the sweetener. Yep, and that's something else I knew I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make another 30 mil bottle of this tomorrow substituting out the super sweet for the TFA sweetener and see what it does to these flavors. That's the thing. It's, it's like what I was saying, you know, even super sweet, it's got different companies where it reacts differently to whatever, you know what I mean? It's, it's don't try and error, isn't it? And legit tomorrow, I'm going to add another percentage of TFA sweetener in there to see if it impacts the flavor profile at all. Is it the ethyl maltol muting it, or is it just a bad combination of some of these flavorings? Maybe I need to really yeah. push the pineapple in there to get it to stand forefront. Definitely. Mango's present in there, and I am getting a citrus blend, but it's like... It's not sweet enough, basically, number one. You, basically, you're looking more for the oranges, the forefront flavor mango at the back with that sweetness yeah yeah i'd be happy with an orange mango pineapple yeah because the nectarine does not um give me nectarine notes then again neither does the knuckle test if i recall correctly If it was the same, the citrus would be off the pineapple, not the orange. Yeah, 
Yeah, the nectarine doesn't like knuckle test like a nectarine tastes. But there's lots of flavoring combinations. When you knuckle test them, they won't taste right because they're too concentrated. Yeah. So we'll see. Bush. And this is the part of DIYing. You got to play with it and experiment. It's like, it's like making coils. The first time you make coils, even if you do a simple Clapton, it's not going to be hundred percent perfect. But it's something I could vape if I had no other church, no other choice. Yeah. And like anything else, practice makes perfect, and the more you do it, the more the better you get. That looks good. Orange mango, orange three, mango jam two, pineapple one. Yeah, that kind of. That's a nice three, two, one. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. You see, because that, that's the interesting thing. You you come up with a recipe there last week off the top of your head. Now you've got people giving a bit of input to how you can improve it, which it has. And it's also got you thinking how you can improve it. And then, then you've got another suggestion again. So that, that's the beauty of the of the whole mixing community, I suppose. You know, there's, you know. Listen, I see tons of posts on, on different social media groups, Facebook groups and stuff, DIY mixing yeah. communities, on people asking for simple recipes. And you'll have 10 different ways to skin a cat to meet what the person asked for. But and the thing yeah. is... Some people are going to like this recipe get... more than the other one. But again, like you say, when you're doing a recipe and you're not quite happy with it, people will quite happily say, well, you know, we'll try this, try that. They'll help you to perfect it. You know what I mean? Yep. Try this, try this. And you legit have to try them all. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Like today, I'm going to try this coffee tobacco. I'm not <laughs> scared of tobacco anymore. I am going to try this sucker out. You'll be in for a shot, mate, I'm telling you. It doesn't taste like what you think it's going to taste. That's the sugar shit is that. And this is a one shot. Honestly, I'm making a 30 mils of this. You will be pleasantly surprised with some of them. I can guarantee it. Just get that tobacco out your head. Just think of the flavor profile, the coffee. 15%. We're going to go with our classic. Super sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll stick with that. There's a simple recipe I'll tell you, for one shot. I'll tell you what. So I'll tell you what made you feck up I've made. I'm listening. A. E, A. E, I forgot to order more of this um, secret sauce. Alright. So I've had no, I've totally run out of secret sauce. Like zero. And B. I tried to go to my local brick and mill at vape shops to get some secret sauce and not one of them was open. So I am clean out of secret sauce. Yeah, but you also have like a hundred bottles of freaking commercial juice in your bag. Yes, but without secret sauce. None of it. <laughs> None of it. It's all one shot shit. None of it has got secret sauce in. So I'm like, fuck. So I was kind of like thinking, Alex's package will be coming, that'll have secret sauce in. But obviously that didn't happen because I had to pay a fucking tax on it. <laughs> so I looked in my box and I know it's Christmas, but that's hence why I'm vaping the ginger and the candy cane. Not only because it's seasonal, but it's got a fucking secret sauce in. <laughs> Fucker, you got gingerbread. I ran out. I thought I still had a little bit left over for this year. But that's that's kind of where I'm at. This one shot's already got some sweetness in it. 
Yes. Come on, camera. Yeah, I think flavors is common. It says it doesn't need much sweetener at all. If you want to do that. I would just do Fuck, it that's neat, good. And if you need it, and that, if you want to pour a bit in, just drop a bit in afterwards. I'm going to vape this and then I'm going to get my um, SSA whipped cream and put a dollop of whipped cream in there and try and get me a nice flat white. <laughs> Although, you know what? I think he did send me some milk I could put in here, too. <laughs> but this taste on the knuckle, fantastic. Uh, I already love it. What fucking tobacco, huh? <laughs> you think it would change the name, like... I don't know. Coffee flavor X smoker. That would be better, wouldn't it? <laughs> nah. X smoker. Not just to just get the word tobacco off. Hey, why are you leaking, little bastard? I mean, honestly, guys and girls in chat, honestly, everything, you know, I'm not just blowing sunshine up the guy's ass. Everything I have had off this guy, whatever it is said on the tin, it has come out exactly that. And, you know, and I just cannot grumble. And i do apologize to the guy i do need to hoist some reviews out there for him to get him out there i will do that in future i will just put a review out on his products and get him out there because the stuff he does is fabulous and i and i, and I can see and I'm, I'm so disappointed that i live here in the uk and it took a guy from the other side of the fucking world to enlighten my taste buds that's all I can see on that. Absolutely fabulous stuff. For hats your own good. You, Absolutely hats off to you, sir. Absolutely brilliant. But any guys in chat, get on his website, get him emailed, get some stuff off him, honestly. Out of this world. Of all, and I'm going to put my neck on the block, of all the years I vaped, I think this is probably the best stuff I've had for a long time. Very long time. Especially that maca apple. Oh my god. I want to drink it, not vape it. <laughs> that good. Michael, no, oh, this is Lucas Daniel. Hello and welcome to the stream. Hello, Lucas. Yeah. I was jumping off of the profile picture. I and thought it was Michael. Very late. We've been gone for three hours. Where you been? <laughs> uh, actually, mate, we're coming on five. Five? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> In ten minutes, it'll be five hours. Well, Nothing unusual for us, though. No. We can go any from three to, I think, it was is it six for longest one? Is it six for longest yeah. hours we've done? Six I think that was a Thanksgiving deal. Yeah. But we don't care. We don't give them ungies. Because we've got a lot to offer. We've got a lot to cram in. I think it might have something to do with the number of alcohols that uh, we consume on our stream. Well, uh, sometimes. Not all the time. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what amount of alcohol. I know, but this is Christmas. And I must admit that, I'll be honest, that's the most you've consumed in a long time, to be honest, buddy. That is the most. I will be honest. I will be honest about that. But we'll get through what we need to get through. That's the main thing. Point four two.
Are you putting point four two on that fucking wick? Like, is that what you're saying? On the drop. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Man, is that a strong coffee. It, honestly, yeah, I think you'll love it. I really do. You like your coffee vapes anyway, didn't you? You're a bit of a sure do. Man, aren't you? I mean, what am I saying? You're in the US. What, what US citizen does not like coffee? Hello. Man, there's a <laughs> bunch of them. Get to fuck, but the majority of them, more like it. Ugh. Yeah, but let's be realistic. Most of the people that love coffee don't actually love the coffee. They love all the freaking sugar and cream and everything else they put in it. Caramel and God knows what else. Oh, all that bullshit. Well, I'm just going to say a hello to Lucas Daniel. He is in Brazil, my friend. Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Hope you guys have had a fantastic Christmas wherever you are. Brazil, my friend, we are international. We are international. And Lucas has also asked you which atomizer do you use? Well, for Hunky Vape, my friend, it is the Arbiter, the Arbiter One, the original Arbiter One. To answer your question, well, thank you and welcome all the way from Brazil. Wow, I am absolutely touched. Blown away by that one, man. Brazil. Wow. Come on. Come on. You know you love it. Come on. Don't be the serious face. You're going to sit back in that chair. And he'll say, yes, I know you are. He's going to do no one does, no one likes to be him. He just sits back in the chair and goes, mm -mm -mm. he's going to do that in a minute. He's going to do it. Three, two, one. There you go. He's sat back. In the chair. That's when you know, ladies and gentlemen, when that man does that, that is when you know he's enjoying that fucking beer. <laughs> You know what this reminds me of? When I got out of basic training boot camp in the Navy, I was stationed in Chicago. We had a week leave before we started our A school, right? Yeah. I went to the train station and I sat there and there was a coffee shop in there. I bought myself a beautiful black car, black coffee. And I told him, I'm like, listen, I want to make sure that if I'm going to buy a black coffee without any cream or sugar and any of that other stuff in there, it's not going yeah. to be bitter. He's like, no, man, we have strong coffee that it is not bitter. I'm like, are you sure there's absolutely no bitter notes to it whatsoever? He's like, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a little pinch of salt and I'm going to put it into your coffee. So even if there's any remote hints of bitterness, the salt will completely take it away. Never That's what this that. tastes like. I never knew salt done that. So basically, not only are you getting a nice flavor, you're getting a bit of reminiscence, shall we say. Yep. A nice South American coffee. See, Darren, I told, I told you would like it, Darren. You know, I miss the tobacco. I don't like tobacco. I told you would like it. Told you. Copy. He'd love it. <laughs> the rich full bodiness of this. Yes, I can tell it's more than just coffee. But I, if you told me it's tobacco, I wouldn't believe you. Yeah. Because it's just. The tobacco is more of a very, very background note. In a good juice, it's a background. It's, 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 it's way, way back. You know what I mean? I mean, you probably can't even I single flavor tobacco, tested the, the tobacco. So I can recognize the notes of it in here. The deep, rich notes of the caramel roasting. Yeah. But it's way back there, though, isn't it? It's a back, it's a back flavor. Not, it's not a prominent flavor. 
And this is not the same as Macca's coffee. No. It's similar. It's got some of that coffee in there. <laughs> he loves it. And that's just the right amount of sweetness. Half a percent of sweetness is all I needed to round out those flavors. Such a simple profile. It's, just, it's, a, it's like for all you guys out there, you know, when you see a, a thing with tobacco in, don't be put off by the word tobacco because it doesn't necessarily mean as tobacco flavor. It just means there's a little note of it. You know, the flavor profile would be more pro But give it a go. There's no harm in trying. If you don't like it, you don't like it. What's what's the worst that can happen? You know what I mean? Oh, he needs Maccas, mate. He definitely needs Maccas, Darren. He needs Maccas. He's got it. You've got, I've got to give him a go of that because I have recommended him that. He needs the Macca's apple pie. Apple. You keep talking about it. He, he needs he needs that in there because he does not believe me how good that is. And <laughs> I'm telling you. He will be blown away by it. If he likes apple pie and he likes the so-called McDonald's, shall we say, you've nailed it. Really, it's fucking amazing. This is something else I love doing when you're mixing stuff. You pick contrasty flavors, contrasty notes, like this tobacco coffee. And then I jump back onto this one that we just mixed up with the mango and the pineapple and the citrus and a little bit of that orange. And then you've got total opposite. Then you can pick up flavors. You can pick up nuances that you didn't even realize were there before. Yeah. Still needs more of a nectarine, more of an orange punch to it. I don't care. I'm happy. You get, you're getting there. But yeah, guys and girls, whatever he goes from here to here. You know what to go. <laughs> Holy crap. The episode 51 for this year. I missed one episode. No way. 51. Yep. Last one of the year, mate. Next time we'll be on, it'll be the second. Holy shit. How tight flies when you're having fun, eh? Damn. <laughs> print so I don't mix this up because I don't want to put the mango on the coffee tobacco no 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 you don't be doing that oh, what the I'm sure I had that one I could, I'm sure I had a, a coffee one by Darren I could have swore I did and I, and I, I did like that one it could have been the same one I and think I it probably was it. yeah Absolutely loved it. I think I say I think the least we can do, you know, is at least stick a review up for for some of Darren's stuff, like because it's it's definitely worth it, and his, his stuff is fantastic. Definitely, definitely worth it. I will definitely do my best to spread the word because it is fantastic stuff. All right, that one's it's labeled, exactly ready to go. Oh, I need to throw a label on the other one. The only there's only one flavor I'll give him a bad review on. What's yours? Musk. Musk. <laughs> no, I can't dock him on musk because musk takes like musk. Doesn't smells like old lady no. perfume. I can't dock them because it does what it says on the tin. For me, it was oh, fruit salad did. because I didn't understand what fruit salad is. You guys have this freaking caramel chewy thing that's vanilla and whatchamacallit. <laughs> you call it fruit so salad. Yeah, yeah. That don't, that's not what it tastes like. I'm, look, I'm expecting grapes and oranges and peaches and all this other no. fruit salad stuff. No, 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 no. no, no it's, no, no. it's exactly what no, it says no, on the no. tin, vanilla and strawberry. I'm like... It's That's not a fruit salad. I, I don't. I don't get us wrong. It is called fruit salad, but I think it's because it's got a bit of a tanginess to it. I think that's why they call it a fruit salad. <laughs> I 
I don't know, we do man. like to confuse you. We do like to confuse you guys a bit over the pond. You know what I mean? Just like the tartar sauce. You were as mayonnaise. It's just fuck off. It's nowhere near mayonnaise. It's a mustard. <laughs> yeah, man. Here in the states, tartar sauce is legit mayonnaise and and pickle relish. It's, it's, it's like a mustard. Over, you know, like, have you ever had old English mustard or, or any kind of mustard? You yeah, mustard Dijon mustard. Whatever. I've had dozens of different kinds of mustard. Yeah, yeah well, that's pretty much what it's like. It's, it's got that heat of a mustard. That's basically what it is. It's like a mustard for fish, shall we say. <laughs> Listen, next time I'm ordering a fish sandwich, I'm going to make my own conco concoction of relish, yours style. Because that does sound really me, good. Uh, a nice I'm punchy gonna mustard. A tartar sauce. I'm going to stick a tartar sauce in your package, mate. It's coming your way. Yeah. I hope fucking customs don't fuck you up on that one, but it's going to come your way. <laughs> nah, they don't give a shit about that stuff. Now, if you gave me mustard seeds so I could plant my own, they'd have a fit about that. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. What's this? What's, what's this? Is this fucking a drug? Is this a drug seeds? Cannabis seeds by any chance? No, they'd be pissed off because now they're going to have to DNA sequence it to make sure it doesn't inviolate some freaking Bill Gates rights that he cloned the patent to this mustard seed. <laughs> yeah, all the laws and legal bullshit I can't fill it. Man, I love it. This thing just has a hint of sweetness to it. And the and the sweetness finishes on the tongue. You get a nice punchy coffee on the on the forefront. <laughs> God, I love it. Leftovers. Oh, I've just had some leftovers that I had what we call a um shit, what the hell we call it? I'm fucking <laughs> You're drunk, mate. Yeah, I'm a little bit on the on the beer, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell, man, you fucking bell end. And you thought basically, I was bad with my Alzheimer's. Basically, we hide everything in the fucking frying pan and fried the bastard. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Potluck. There you go. Potatoes, sprouts, veg. Boom. Fry it all up next day. It's fucking fantastic. I love it, mate. That was great. What the fuck? That's brain fart and brain farts. That's Jesus Christ. Bubble and squeak. That's came. Bubble and squeak. There you go. Bubble and squeak? That's, bubble and, that's what we call it. Bubble and squeak. Fried up leftover turkey dinner. Bubble and squeak. All your veg, all that crap, chuck in a frying pan. Lovely. Yummy leftovers. Yep. Turkey, baked Bubble ham, and noodles, and cookies. Yep. Bubble and squeak, man. That's what we call it. My I wife last night made these stuffed shells. And inside the stuffed shells, she had broccoli and shredded chicken. And it was all covered in an Alfredo sauce. Oh, very nice. Yo, spoiled you. No wonder you kind of get out that fucking chair. <laughs> I'll have some of them leftovers, please. Actually, she's she's baking up a pan of it for her brother today. We we had by the, by the chair the shop, right? It's called Madagascan Custard. Honestly, it is to fucking die for this shit. It's a such a creamy, rich. Thick custard. Honestly, you've, you've got to taste it and believe it. It's fucking fantastic. You put on your, <laughs> your Christmas pud or your mince pies, get it on there, you know. Oh. Mallory Gates says if you want a linguistic adventure, get a Scot or an Irishman drunk. You might be able to pull out a word or two out of the entire thing he ate Iggy Apples out of his mouth. I'm not that bad. I'm Jordy, you know what I mean? I'm, you know. <laughs> ah, but you ain't a real Scottishman, Irishman. No, 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 no. Your accent is I'm on, tame and timid. I'm on the border. We're on the border of Scotland. We're not far from the border of Scotland. That's, that's where the nearest we are. Vic's got more of an accent than you do. 
Oh, he is Scottish. He's from Inverness. He's Scottish. Yeah. We've got Inverness. I mean, John Wayne, we, quiet we man. Are, we are kind of Geordie, but if you go more to Northumberland, fuck me, even Astro will understand them. Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> the answer on them. <laughs> it is like Scottish and Geordie in one, you know. The, instead of taking the dog out, it's taking the dog out. We're taking the dog. The dog. It's not the dog, it's the dog. You're like, what the fuck? Oh, their accent is really broad. Really you know what's broad. really, really gotten crazy? When I learned to speak Hungarian as a child, matter of fact, I learned how to speak it before I, I spoke English because my mom yeah. had just come out when, right before I was born. If I were to go to Hungary again, every time I've gone there, they keep incorporating more and more English words into their routine language and the routine speak that they have. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, yeah, uh, you've incorporate you, you. First off, you have to be multilingual if you're in Europe, right? It's just not realistic for you to, uh, to have conversations with international business people and not know other languages besides your own. And English is the most common one, followed by Spanish, and you know what I mean. I think here in Europe, though, the most popular language is English. So as English, we are lazy. We don't have to learn another language as such, as most of the countries speak English to a certain degree. I regret not taking a second language in high school because I took Hungarian school and I knew English. I didn't need to take a third language. They were happy with the fact yeah. that I was already going to Hungarian school once a week. But I regret not picking up Spanish or German or... You know, French. My wife, is, my wife speaks a bit of German because she had a German grandmother. To cut a long story short, my me, me wife was adopted. Um, and a mom, a mom's mom, so to speak, was German. She was a refugee from the war and all that shit. And obviously, my wife picked up German because they used to speak to each other in German. So she, it's German, it's, it's, She's got, it's not so much to speak, she's got the ah, and the ah, and the ah, you know, the, 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 all that, she's got, she's got that to a T. Me, you know, you could say, Sprat and die Deutsch now and whatever, but she, ah, and the, you know, she's got the ah, and the ah, she's, she's got it, she's, she can pronounce it. The necessary phlegm to yeah, pronounce the words pronounce correctly in the right dialect. It to a she's got it down to a T, you know, and, and and she, she does speak a little bit, and she said if she ever went to Germany, she could survive speaking the native language. It just, again, it's for like every language, but a lot of like ad libs or words that mean the same. Local dialects. So, yeah, local dialects. And sometimes some are very fast, and it's you know difficult to keep up with them. You know That's I mean? definitely true about European language. Yeah. They speak way faster oh. than you and I speak. Hungarian is definitely true of that. And the only thing that you need to know as far as dialect goes in the Hungary is you had to learn to roll the R's. Yeah. You know, as a kid, we were taught, Reparatek Mojoro. So you could learn how to roll the R's. Roll the R's. But I think the German language just sounds so fucking angry, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, just, it's just a very, very angry looking, very angry. But it isn't, you know what I mean? When you, when you look at it, it isn't, but it's, I don't know, it's weird. But I mean, to me, the best language of all to learn is sign because it's recognized where we currently are. Sign language is a starry language. And I remember many moons ago, I was, I was, I was spending time with a guy. His mom was deaf and dumb. Wait, like, they say deaf and dumb. They're not fucking dumb. I, I, I don't <laughs> like that phrase. You know, deaf and dumb. She's not fucking dumb. You know, they just call it that. But he, you know, it was sign. And he, and he used to teach us some stuff in sign. And, well, the thing with sign is, you can talk to somebody 200 fucking yards away from you. You can go <laughs> that, and they can know exactly what you're fucking saying. You know what I mean? Instead of going, Oi, you! You know what I mean? All you want to do is give it that, and there could be that, and they'll know exactly. You can have a conversation with somebody 200 fucking yards away from you. It's brilliant. And I did learn a bit of that, but I, again, it's something, if you don't keep it up, you never, and I didn't. So I've probably forgotten more than what I learned. That's the same way with me in Hungarian. If you don't speak it regularly, 
Yeah. It, it becomes very hard to do. And matter of fact, every time I've gone back to Hungary, you know, I always have to apologize and say, listen, I need to take the sandpaper out and clean up my language. That's the exact yeah. translation from the way you say it in Hungarian. But the meaning is, you know, you need to brush up on your language. I mean, because you don't use it regularly. A lot of languages, the first thing you know is the rude words to me. And I'm fucking, know, what's, what's the word for this? What's the word for that? You know what I mean? The ironic no part there, is, yeah. though, if somebody is speaking the language, I can understand everything that they say. But yeah. for me to formulate the words and say them, it's just uh, another obstacle. Yeah. It's like anything it's else. If you moved to the country sure. in two weeks, you'd be able to speak it fluently. Yeah. If you know the that language. One there, say, that one there is like, like that, 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 that. Let's go fuck yourself and sign. <laughs> that, that, that. <laughs> That's, See, you got the important amazing. parts down. Uh, that does what I'm saying. It's always the dirty words you learn first. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, German. Je See, my wife can say for example, Jaiserkopf, which in English means shithead. Jaiserkopf, you're a shithead. <laughs> you know what I also what loved about Europeans when we talk, regardless of what nationality you're from? We've always been village folks so to speak, peasants, oh, right? So when you swear yeah. in Europe, in your old school, you usually swear by referring to people to anatomical parts of livestock. Yeah, I got to see where you're coming from with that one, yeah. You know, like we, we take for granted, you know, when you call somebody a dickhead, but in Hungarian, <laughs> you would refer to them as a kemény fos. A hard cock. <laughs> really? And that's referring to the horse at breeding time. Yeah. And it's a funny old thing, language, you know, I mean, it's, as much as I would love to learn one, but I just, I don't know. <sighs> it's funny, though. I mean, the angrier you get, the more detailed you describe the anatomy to the person that you're insulting. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Right down to the dingleberry no, no. coming off of its butt. Yeah. Definitely, and then you yeah. usually refer to how that would taste if they ate it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a guy I work with, he comes in with the greetings. The greetings are fucking fantastic. I mean, you come in and say, you know, hello there, you bag of fucking foreskins and all that shit. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? You fucking entrails of a fucking pig. How are you all doing? <coughs> he comes up with shit like that every morning. You're like, what the fuck? What did I do to deserve that? <laughs> uh, you know, the best part is, though, after they get done insulting you, everybody's friends again, and uh, they'll be the first ones to invite you to go have dinner at their place. No, it's it's, it's all in good humor. I mean, it's, it's not nothing horrible. It's just all humor. Just, we just wait for what he comes out with every day because he comes out with something totally fucking different. It's fantastic. With a bit, a bit of fun. But, I mean, all nationalities do that. You know, you'll sit yeah, there and man. insult your best friend and you know that you can get away with it because they'll insult you and you guys are totally fine with it because you don't either take it or you take it seriously. Well, we call it banter at the end of the day. It's banter, isn't it? It's yeah, that's cute, all it is. It's you? just a bunch of banter. Like you and I convers yeah, conversing on our weekly vlog. <laughs> exactly. It's just banter, you know what I mean? I don't give a monkey's. Not that, I mean, the all thing right, is this world now. We've once again reached quarter past the five-hour mark. I don't know what it is. I, I'll put that down as a milestone. It's as simple as that. <sighs> and we I hope everybody had hours. a wonderful holiday. When we hit five hours and we've entertained people for five hours, I'm a happy bunny, mate. Honestly, really happy bunny. Because the way I look at it, how many live shows go out every week doing a minimum of three to five hours? Not one. They all do the daft little hour because they're pussies. We'll do an hour. We'll do an hour. Bullshit. We do the whole hog. The longer we go, the more I'm fucking proud of it, man. Tell you, love it. I can't wait till Thursday. We've got, we've got things to talk about. That's the thing, you see? That is the thing. 
<laughs> it's not only that, you know, sometimes, guys, this technically this stream can sometimes go to six hours because when we're done here, we end up yakking again for <laughs> fuck knows. <laughs> yeah, mate. My wife usually is getting off work at seven, seven thirty. And I'd say about half the time, Kenny and I are still chatting away when she calls me to let me know she's on her way home. Exactly. And then obviously I'll see you, mate. We'll let you go. <laughs> I get him in the dog. Yeah, house. because for you, it's stores. already midnight. Well, we're 22, 70, 20 past 10 over here at the moment. Which is not too bad. Still early, man. I don't, I don't normally hit the cycle about midnight anyway. I'm, I'm a light sleeper. Six hours does me. Bang. Sorted. Don't need a lot of sleep. I don't know why. I, I would love to have more, but I'm an average six, seven hour sleeper tops. Yeah, and as the older you off, get, the yeah. less uh, less sleep you actually routinely get. I mean, I've been off work now two days, but I've been waking up at like half six, seven o'clock. Bang. Body clock. You know what I mean? Boosh. Waking up. Up, you know I mean? Well, it's like my mom. My mom sleeps an average of three, three and a half hours a night, but she takes probably three or four 20 minute naps during the day. Well, I'm guilty of that. <sighs> I mean, I'm, I sometimes like I'll come in, <clears throat> get me tea, etc. I'll crash out, and then all of a sudden I'll wake up at 11 o'clock and bright eyed bunny and all that shit. And you think, oh shit. And I hate it when that happens because obviously you're wide awake and you think, I need to be to sleep. I need to get up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when you do that. You just some and sometimes the fucking dog. Obviously, he'll come. He'll jump on the chair. And he's giving it that because he wants to go out. And this is like could be like two, threes in the morning. And you're like, oh God's sake! <laughs> so it kind of interrupts your sleep pattern a bit. But yeah, you know, we, average six hours does me. No, um, not too bad. <clears throat> and a couple of nana naps in between. I'm a happy bunny. <laughs> Be loading in number. Yesterday, Jesus Christ, I had me dinner. About two o'clock by the time I had lunch. Sat down. Had a bit of we had me let me dinner settle. Then we had a bit of dessert, a bit of Christmas pudding about four or five o'clock with some nice custard on. By six o'clock I was <laughs> Zong. and i woke up at five to twelve on you bastard <laughs> my wife's stuffed shells were so wonderful and she she made some garlic toast with cheese on it mozzarella cheese that was just ooh, perfectly oh. broiled in the oven sounds good and there was no room for cookies of any kind <laughs> none <laughs> the nut rolls are gone yes. But we still have snickerdoodles and chocolate chip cookies, and we've got peanut butter drops, which are peanut butter cookies with the Hershey's Kiss on it. And then some yeah. kind of whipped cream. She used Cool Whip to make some kind of cookie or something. My daughter loves that one. The secret is you've got to let that main meal just settle for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then you're ready to go again. <laughs> yeah. That's the way, that's my philosophy. I mean, it does seem to work, so. If I haven't put a stone on over Christmas, I'll be very surprised because I have just et and et and et. I've made a pig in myself, period. I've had to the point where I've just felt sick. <laughs> 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 Listen, it only comes once I, a year. You have to enjoy yourself. <clears throat> exactly, mate. Once a year. Stop me, Pierce. Get back to work. I'll lose it again in a week, so I'm not worried. <laughs> What you doing for New Year's? Anything? Normally quiet, may well be quiet New Year. Um, there's a there's a program that comes on. It's called um, Hoot Tanani, and it's Jules Holland, and he just has a lot of live music on. He does the countdown to the New Year. We we'll normally just sit and watch that with a few. Well, I'll have another bottle of Bailey's, and we'll just watch that and see the New Year in, and then happy days. I mean. Days of partying that are, are long gone. The thing is, nobody trusts anybody anymore around, you know, in this day and age. You know, years ago, we used to pop next door to people's houses, going around, joining parties. Now, it doesn't happen anymore. No trust. We are looking in into taking a trip to see a Penguins game, hockey game, New Year's Eve. 
Yeah, cool. Yeah, generally, like, so we'll probably end up just watching a movie, watch a bit of this guy with his music, and then Bob's your uncle. It's quiet in, quiet night in, just spend a bit of time together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Simple and quiet, nothing drastic. I mean, my days of partying are long gone. <laughs> Same here, mate. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. Many moons ago, I'd have been out in the pub club, six o'clock on the dot. Yeah, we've had people nah. invite us to go to the club or go to, you know, the VFW or whatever, and it's like, no. No, those days, I don't I want... I've had enough. I've had my fill of them. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So the wife's got two days off, and it's just like, you know, hey, man, uh, I cut the hair for the guy that does, you know, runs Ticketmaster. So um, what do you think about going to see the Penguins play? I'm like, yeah, that'd be awesome. I haven't done that in years. So we're going to get a box seat and go up and see the Penguins play. I think I see it. It's, I think I see it with this day and age, everybody's working or playing. The time you get off, you know, you want to sp spend the best as you can. So, you know, it's quality time, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so you only live once. Make the most of the time you I'm have. And I'm more than happy to sit cuddled up on the couch with the bird and the missus watching the old uh, movie, whatever. I'm more than happy to do that. Absolutely love it. Same here, mate. I'm a man of simple needs, mate. I'm a man of simple needs now. Simple needs. Don't need a lot in my life. A vape, good woman. What more can you ask for? <laughs> wow. What a beautiful you coffee. Ahead. See, I told you like that. I had to see. I'm I, I nah. Anna. Yes, you do, Anna. sir. All right, folks. Absolutely. Peace, love, and a hunky vape is my wish to all of you. I hope you guys all have a fantastic holiday, fantastic New Year's Day. We'll be back one week from today on uh, January 2nd, 2024. Holy shit. That sounds so far New away. New year. So close. 2020. This is like the third year we're doing this. What the hell? Holy moly. Where's that time? Just gone? flew right by. It has, hasn't it? I'll see if I have enough oh, time. Maybe I'll shit. throw together another recap of the past year. <laughs> I will see, yeah. I doubt but it. Yeah, we'll boys see. and girls, thank you to you guys as always in chat. You absolutely make the show. Um, again, I hope you have a very peaceful and prosperous new year. I hope you know you get everything you wish for. Um Again, thank you, Alex. I'm fucking hell. Three years, Jesus Christ. I don't know if I've aged that much, have I? <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I do enjoy it. I do love it. And may it, long may it continue. But until then, yeah, guys, we will see you same time, same place. But it will be next year. So in the meantime, you all stay safe, vape safe. Have a fantastic new year. And we'll see you all then. You all take care. Bye bye now. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week again for a fresh round. I know one thing for sure. I've never been so close.